Hello, hello. <clears throat> Anyone there? Hello and welcome. As they say. So, I guess I have, to, I have to make a decision here. What am I casting? Am I being selective or am I being thorough? I think we should be thorough. <clears throat> But maybe play through the games a little quickly. So let's see. We don't seem to have many viewers. I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe there's no notifications right now. But whatever. We shall begin. In group A. So, we'll begin in group A with uh, Tagada and Blast Chilled. So, Tagada's down here. Both players have gone for Aeon. Tagada gonna build the four maxes with the ACU and the. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight P gens. Second air. We're on map gen. This is fifteen times fifteen. So you can see here it says twenty by twenty. However, there's a a black space here. So it's actually fifteen by fifteen map gen with quite a lot of mass, as it often has. We got uh, four islands of relevance. This one, obviously, I mean, it doesn't even have a reclaim on it, actually. So, <clears throat> no real use for this. But uh, several bases. There's a plateau with a max on it. And some reclaim. And most of the fighting, it looks like, well, on these kind of maps, it's uh, they're very tricky to play because there's so many bases to fight over and it's difficult to defend everything interesting that this plateau is here and it doesn't have maxes but it has some nice reclaim might be worth dropping an engineer on there as you head towards this uh, this uh, island from uh, either side hard to really say which side you should go towards I guess Tagada the player on Tagada's side would probably be closer to these bases here than he would be to the ones on the other side slightly also navy could become a factor but because there's such a large landmass 
I think that mm, the game is going to be mostly based on on fighting for those those bases on the on the islands to the left and right rather than some sort of large naval fight into tech 2 navy and stuff because it's going to be about the land war and of course as usual on a map of this size air so we got a second air factory for blast i would expect the acus to leave their home base and head to these islands blast dropping first drops one engineer here gonna pick up the maxes and both players have chosen aeon which means they both have the option to send land scouts and aurora across we have three aurora here sorry three engies here that have been scouted by that uh spirit and the aurora not really heading in this direction okay now it is here we go takes a shot a couple of shots on the factory before well it needs to turn its attention to the, why is it shooting the factory oh in fact it's trying to shoot the engineer behind the factory so the factory is completed which is extremely important however engineers are dying this engineer pretty clutch gets the other max up but then goes down to the aurora this aurora has been fantastic so far it looks like there's a lot of air for tagada takes out the air scout there and now is dropping this engineer has walked it seems across which is quite good now the acu is here as well a couple of aurora come out of this factory bomber takes out the engineer here which is a very nice pickup and of course we also had a drop over here now he went for a hydrocarbon I really don't like that particular idea. Hydras are nice, but uh, there should not be the priority when you're dropping that far away from your base and Aurora can come across the water. I think this factory is a good move with the... Both of these factories are good moves just to harass here early on and drop in this direction. Also, the ACU heading over here secures probably these two bases quite comfortably if if there was a a fight to happen in that area which actually there hasn't been blast has not actually managed to put pressure here so tag has dropped every main base here hasn't dropped the singular maxes and now he's building factories essentially everywhere here he drops the hot he is building the hydro which again is a little greedy but given that he actually has all of the bases it's not quite so bad and also he knows there isn't pressure here he has good scouting for example this air scout whereas uh, blast does not have all of these bases doesn't have the mexes here does not have this base either this base definitely should have been should have been dropped just one ng is all that's needed and so in the opening blast actually has quite a lot of reclaim which is interesting however his expansion is less and his um his power income is less, which is important because, well, I guess Tagad is actually overflowing a lot of it. But um, Tagad has managed to get to Tech 2 Air without really stalling power, which is the main thing you will stall when, you, when you're heading to Tech 2 Air. Mass is usually not an issue. That's a very ambitious factory there that's actually going to complete, but is likely to die very, very shortly. And actually, look, a bomber flies past just as engineers are dropped forward. And the bomber is, yeah, it's now being microed. However, blast to split. Oh, he kills the tank here. Was that a tank or was that a flare? Kills something. Blast now brings in his areas. Quite a f number of Inties. But uh, many, many Aurora coming to actually clean up those factories just as they're built. And the engineers are all dead already this position also looking very scary as there are far more units for Tagada moving in the PD oh it almost gets finished blast was trying to rebuild that PD but fails so close to finishing that would have gotten many many kills but uh, it does go down and the factory should also go down now shortly this is a nice base and but really the it shows how good Aeon is here, like you, you couldn't really do anywhere near as much with 
just some random land factories on your side of the map, so. Already looking very good. This base cleaned up, and this place also cleaned up basically simultaneously. Could have killed the Hydra, but again, not a big deal. Uh, that is extremely good for, for Tagada, and should, at this point, put him in a position where he is playing safely, comfortably, and uh, just making sure he doesn't allow any snipes or particular advantages. So now the aim if you're tagging in this position is to win air control and also not lose navy. You're not necessarily looking to crush navy super hard or anything. You're just like win air number one. Number two you know don't lose navy and uh, well the thing is once you complete the first condition which is what he's doing the second condition is essentially fulfilled as well. Nice little counter raid here. Takes out the factory and some a couple of mexes, but then the bombers come in and wipe up the aurora. These bombers have also wiped up many aurora around here, although some damage was done. It's a requiem. What's up, Mr. K? Another nice raid here. This is a, this is a very very interesting raids here. Actually, I'm not sure how these aurora have gotten past, but nice raids at this point are likely to be too little, too late, barring a significant lead in upgraded mechs. Now, Taggart is well overflowing a lot of power because he's actually not producing. There we go. Now he's turned his factory back on very quickly. He's just finished a couple more mechs, so he's got three of them now. Blast has only one Tech 2 mass extractor, one more on the way. And really doesn't have any advantages to his name. Losing air is, is uh, critical. He's also not making swift wins. Very difficult. I mean, you know. You can't really win back air by making inties in my opinion now people will claim that inties are more efficient in an air fight however good luck making uh making enough inties that's the issue Up fungus with the Peter, and yeah, Tagada continues his his offensive on the land. He's got a nice mix of units there. Still only Tech One, no Tech Two land yet. He's again, as I said, the focus has been. I mean, Tech Two land right now would be a very a very good idea in my opinion. But uh, there's many very good ideas when you're in such a dominant position. He's actually going to kill. He can kill this expansion. Uh, essentially, this whole island is is almost cleaned up now. Oh, that's uh, yeah. Tagada could have made some air staging. He just lost maybe twenty inties there for free, which is a bit sad. But still, he can win. Oh, that's blast in the uh, commander that he's chasing. Now. I was wondering. Oh, it didn't make sense that he was running away because he had enough. Swifties to win the air fight, but uh, he wasn't running away. He was being chased. <laughs> and he was chasing. So he catches Blast Shield's calm. I don't know uh, if Blast Shield. I assume he had Tech 2. That's up slow. If you have no mass, it would be okay to. Yeah, maybe. PDs in the base mean that there's no way for a calm drop to work, really. There's probably not even a way for a Tech 3 Calm Drop to work in this scenario. Um, unless it's not spotted at all. I mean, yeah, well, that wasn't the case. But, um, yeah, very comfortable win for Tagada. I think this map, this kind of map, is a map where Tagada is going to win uh, against Blast. I mean, this is going to be one of the highest win rates 
per map for, for Tagata in this matchup, I would say. Right. On to their next game. All all games are best of three in the group stage. So we're in, we're watching Group A right now. Let me post the let me find the challenge. Oh, I have it right here actually. Now, of course, if you look at the challenge, you will see spoilers. So if you don't want to know the results, don't click on this link. <laughs> if you don't mind spoilers. Go right ahead. So. And of course I assume some people were watching yesterday. Okay. Alright, so we're on Niflheim. So this map would have been chosen by Blast Chill. Tagada chose... The higher, the higher seed, who is Tagata, would uh, choose the first map. The second map is chosen by the lower seed. And the final map, if necessary, is... Is... Uh, the final map is chosen by the higher seed. Yeah, hey, what's up, Aaron? Uh, Requiem asks, what? Why does YouTube always showcase subcom but not subcom FA? Oh, you mean like under the video? Uh, I that's 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 the only option there is. There is no option for Supreme Commander Forged Alliance. There's only an option for Supreme Commander. Probably because Forged Alliance is a an expansion, and although it is actually standalone, it is still an expansion. That old dead video game format or computer game format. All right, so factions are interesting. We have uh, we have Seraphim versus Cybern. So I'm not sure what people banned. I would assume that well, perhaps UEF is the is for choice on this map. I I'm. I'm guessing that there was a UEF ban. I'm not sure if both of them banned UEF. I'd say probably one of them banned UEF because UEF is quite nice here. Other than that, nice to see some Cybern. Seraphim, of course, has been quite popular throughout this year in all major tournaments. It has been the most popular faction. So far in lots, it uh, this year, from what I've seen, it is less popular. And we actually missed something here, which was a Selene, and the engineer running around in the Selene actually was denied the kill. Been away for a while. Since when did Tiger have this high of rating? Uh, he's just been gaining rating from tech one tournament or tech one one v one tournaments mainly on ladder he's like 2400 as well so and yeah he's he's done he he does well in every tournament i think how many how many of the invitationals did he win this year uh He's won multiple though, pretty sure. Pretty sure he's won at least two of the invitations and we've had spring, summer, fall. I think he's, he, he didn't win all three though, did he? I'm trying to think. Is there a new game in the works? Um, there's some people working on a game called Sanctuary. But there's no... Uh, gameplay or anything available at the moment so so far Tagada just simply has a, a better build order at this point managed to avoid early damage from the Selene his, his just T1 spam is on point 
And I think he'd be going for... Yeah, he's making transport now. He's gotten the reclaim on this plateau. He'll be heading towards this reclaim. These maxes. He, he could he could also drop on the, the top plateau. Actually, okay. Here's the... Uh, okay, that's actually a huge mistake for Blast. You can see, uh, like, almost everyone you'll see play this map will edge build a factory, say, here or here. Very early on, one of their initial... You know, maybe their... It ends up being their maybe their fourth or fifth factory, factory, because they have to get this reclaim. Like if you look here, it's fifteen hundred mass. So Blast's only getting this now, and even even so, he's still not getting it because he's building a factory and then walking away from the reclaim. That is absolutely critical. And you can see Tiger has one k plus more mass reclaimed. And the earlier you get a mass injection like that, the bigger an impact it has. So that's a that's just a failure of uh, understanding the map here which is pretty surprising that's kind of a bad mistake from blast actually I mean the guy knows how, how this map is played it's sad so Still, he's doing... He's doing okay score-wise. But uh, he's he's just kind of behind. And actually, look at the edges. Like, how, like uh, Taggart has several of these mexes. He's taking this important reclaim here, which is quite... And this reclaim he's taken as well, if we look here. Again, that's a thousand reclaim there. Now this has been taken at least, which is nice, or mostly taken. Okay, bit of a drop. This nice move from Blast to try and attack this position, but like the instant counter with the a counter drop from Tagata is quite nice. Looks like Blast does have air control, which is a nice advantage. Tagata responding with a lot of assistance on his air factory now. And we might even see, yeah, there's an anti-air. You can see some anti-airs mixed in now. Tagata with far more units. On this side, and Blast needs to run away. He's he's actually attacking into this, which is not going to work. Not going to get favorable trades there. He's just going to leave reclaim for Tagata to grab. Now let's let's check how quickly Tagata grabs this reclaim. That's what. Uh, these are the kind of things that you should be watching. Look at this. You see, this is this is the level we're on, guys. Okay. See what I mean? Hmm, how quickly will he get the reclaim? Now maybe he's dropping to get the mexes. But I am expecting him to just grab all this reclaim. Oh, no orders given after the mechs. Interesting. Well, either way, he has the NGs. And meanwhile, he is busy fighting the AC. He's actually about equal on health with Blast Shield. Huge reclaim field building now. Tagada gonna pick up some manually with this commander blast chilled doing the same and going for a PD to try and secure some of that and uh, yeah Tiger is gonna build a factory he also builds drops in six engineers oh and then picks up a few of them again to drop again to the top side actually where he's just cleaned up with a few mantis and now begins pushing in again. It's quite brave for Tagada to, to move in here. A lot, all the reinforcements from, from Blast Shield's base heading in this direction. Same story for Tagada. Tagada also attacking on this side, but that's not working out. Blast Shield running out of units rapidly. Tagada retreating. PD never got finished for, for Blast Shield either. And actually... This is still not taken. That's still not taken, which is a bit crazy. But yeah, Blast now out of units completely. And there's no units coming. There's nobody. Nobody here to save him. He's not going to reach a vet either. He's dropping lower and lower the Mantis surrounding him. And even the Medusa shell lands. And that's GG. I think actually Blast played... Uh, reasonably well there I think that, well I mean this was quite a bad mistake in my opinion the, the being being late to the plateau reclaim is 
is a crime. But uh, Taggart played played very well. Taggart uh, Blast actually moving to Tech Two Land is the the mistake that got him killed and lost him a lot of map control as well. So I think um, sometimes you have, if you're playing against a player like Tagata, who you know is more skilled, you could sort of overestimate their position. So Tagata, I mean, he has tons of factories. These ones are idle. <laughs> Probably has mass in the bank. Yeah, he's lots of mass. So he could have been tech two, potentially, but he wasn't, and he wasn't going tech two either. But um, but yeah, Blast sort of thought that he was losing. Uh, Plus, he thought that Tagata would be going to Tech 2 land as well. And that was the mistake. He sort of overestimated Tagata a little bit there. Although, to be fair, Tagata had the resources to actually be a Tech 2. Well, Peter, at this stage, I wouldn't say Tagata is, is an underdog against Nexus, actually. I'd say it's very even between the two of them. All right, let's continue watching Tagata's games in Group A. So he takes out Blastchild 2-0. Blastchild was the bottom seed in Group A. The other players in Group A are Tex and Paralon. Actually, Paralon is... This was the second seed, I believe. Let me double check. No, Tex was second seed. Paralon was third seed. So here we have Tagata versus Tagata versus Tex. And let me change the scene. It's a beauty. So we got Tex. Tex has UEF. And Tagata has Seraphim. So it makes me wonder what Tex vetoed. I'm not really sure what Tex vetoed to allow. Like, it's not that Seraphim is amazing here, but I'm interested to know. Maybe he vetoed. Maybe Cybern was the veto. Uh, I don't expect anyone to veto Aeon. Either way, it's interesting. I mean, Cybern, there's not there's nothing really stand out about any particular faction here. I'd say, which actually is probably why I'm so interested in what they picked and banned. Subtex, you might want to sit this one out. Okay, t tag it a bit of a power stall there as he just was a bit maybe lacking a little bit of reclaim. You can see this is a very tight build he's doing here. I mean, tight by tight, I mean it's not working. So that's. Yeah, six P gens building his third factory, that's usually a problem. Like, didn't quite work that one out properly, I guess. But uh, he really doesn't want to build additional P-Gens. The reason is if he builds, like, the normal, like... If he builds, you know, three more P-Gens than this, then once he builds a Hydra, he's going to have way too much power. So that's that's the issue he's in. He 
he's gonna end up overbuilding tech one pigeons to avoid a stall there so he doesn't want to do that and speaking of overbuilding tech one pigeons that might be what tex has done here yeah it's literally exactly what i was telling you tagged was trying to avoid tex has actually gone and done so thank you tex for illustrating this perfectly <laughs> that's uh and, he's, and he, he does even have two air factories and still can't spend his power so but certainly Tagata comes out with the better build there and his expansion looks i mean look at how many units we have here and how many mechs are built just superior that is the power of you know building the right number of pgens so no transport just yet i would expect a transport pretty soon although they're choosing to go for bombers and things first which is fair enough um nobody going for the very early bomber which is what you when you would normally see the bomber they're going for it a little bit later engineers spotted they'd be great target for this bomber and that's where that bomber is headed let's see does it have well it has an attack order on at least one There's a Zooey. This Zooey can be very annoying from behind the mountain. Tex arrives in the middle a little bit sooner. Begins building a factory. And he's going to lose this position. That's very painful. I mean, he doesn't seem to have any units here. Overall, I'm just going to guess that Tex has like less than half the units right now. Oof. Tex, your, your eco is absolutely... <laughs> not balanced at all so you do have about half the tanks here comes the transport you're bombing a tech one max which is not the ideal target but now the bomber is on its way to these engineers there's an empty oh he doesn't get to drop at all Uh, I would say Seraphim is, is definitely the best on, yeah, point of reach, it's, I'd say it's the best faction on, um, pizza, say on pizza, it's, there's not much argument about pizza, Seraphim is the best there in my opinion. But also the gap is closed on these maps like because the, the Zooey's are take a bit longer to build. So here we have an air fight. Looks like Tex can win this, honestly. And he does have some decent micro there. It looked like he really ought to have won it. Uh, oh wait, that's not Tex, that's Tagata. Never mind. <laughs> why, why did I get confused there? Uh, yeah, but uh, it always looked like Tagata was going to win there. Yeah, this map is, I mean, yeah, UD, this map is, is very BO intensive, I would say. I mean, it's not difficult to make an okay BO, but if you mess up, it it's very difficult to not get crushed. That's what I would definitely say, because... It's just very hard to to defend everything because everything is far away. This is far away. This is far away. This is far away. Which means that if you mess up early on, you can't possibly defend these things that are so distant. You don't have safe expansions. There's no such thing as a safe expansion on this map. So, Tangina wins that one, and I think we can say that the uh, 
this this build was uh, the major issue. Channel predictions. Can you do that on YouTube? That's more of a Twitch thing. Also, <laughs> I'm casting games from yesterday. At sandbox. I'm not sure if he. I don't know. Did tag it a sandbox? That particular build? Maybe. Well, probably he did. I don't know if he sandboxed it for this tournament. Or if he had it sandboxed before. But even so, his, his build was not exceptional or anything. <clears throat> Whatever you do, don't watch the one point. Well, I mean, I'm obviously going to watch that. Are you crazy? If I if I didn't watch anything else in this group, I would watch that game. That would be the only one I watched. Don't you understand how YouTube works? He sandbox builds for the map in the past. Yeah, that seems more likely, because I'm sure that map has been in lots, multiple times. Brain slows down the more games you play. I, my, mine was the opposite yesterday. My, my brain finally came online once I was playing Esperanto. Against Turbo, it was, you know, in... Uh, power saving mode right so the map map gen 10 by 10 uh, hmm what's going on on this map here we have only 3000 mass a little bit in the opening and Tex is not getting this I mean you, you surely have to grab this mass here um, as you can see Tangata has that rock already I mean that's Bit already weird, honestly, Tex. Huge amount of assistance. I think uh, if we look at Tagada, we'll see, yeah, just more expansion, much faster expansion. Also, no units so far because this is 10 by 10 in the corners, right? Corner spawns, which is as far away as you can get from each other. Plus, there's water in the middle, so you really can delay your units much longer than otherwise yeah that's why why is the taskbar showing for me it's annoying there we go Okay, so yeah, you can delay your units much longer. So you can see that he has six uh, engineers before he makes some units. This Zui has one mission and one mission only. That is to kill this expansion. So he's going to have to, he should send the air scout over this position at a certain point. Maybe, well, right now would be the perfect time. And then you can just have the Zui on the water and kill these uh these mexes so where yeah he's not flown over the the uh spots a tank there and actually tex loses a an inti and air scout also is here and that's why tagata is sending his his inties in this direction because he hasn't seen the scout leave actually so maybe the scout is still here somewhere or maybe it flew up here. Yeah, it went up this direction. And he scouts the Zooey. Thing is, he scouted it, but he can't do anything about it. Because he does not have a bomber. A bomber is actually the only way to kill this. Why is the minimap bugged? Oh, do you mean like the, the black and white? I have no idea, to be honest. Air scout, to, air scout to scout if there are raids. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, what's up, Nick? Yeah, having having a folder of of bios is is good. I have I have like some folder of builds that I made for one of the lots, and I've never looked at it since. I don't even know what's in there, and it's maybe like. It, did I do 15 maps? And they're probably not even good builds particularly. They're just like 15 minutes of sandbox maybe. <laughs> Most of them are just quite quite low effort. So here comes the this annoying Zooey. Tex is just actually overflowing mass there, by the way. Casually overflowing mass. So... Quite sad. Also, Tex is saying that he lost his... He went for a bomber and uh, lost it in the opening. Tagged it with some good micro there. He's got low HP inties that got quite a few shots. Bombs an NG and now he's going to bomb this tank. Never a bad idea to bomb a tank. Also nice to see bombers doing the correct damage finally again. So yeah, Tex queuing up a million factories. He definitely can't afford all of those, I would say. No presence really on this top side at all. He's got all the NGs here. Here's the thing, right? He's got all the NGs here and he's got all the tanks over here. So this, this Zooey is a champion. Killing all the mexes. Really, once he saw the Zooey, he had to bomb it. Or he had to basically just leave an engineer there. So as soon as the Zooey kills the mexes, he can just walk over, rebuild, and then come back. But uh, yeah, again, no engineers here and all the tanks here. All the engineers here and no tanks here, which obviously makes little sense. He's, he's getting the reclaim, which makes sense, but he can't expand here. Of course. Also, Tagada positioning his ACU on the top side with some tanks. He's going to secure this and attempt to deny this. Now, the thing is, he can deny this by simply... Well, he doesn't even have to do anything because there's no NGs. He's denied it by, by bombing one or two uh, engineers. And now Tagada is dropping the right-hand side, which is exactly what I was thinking you would have to do because... Uh, If you don't send the ACU to the corner, I mean, you've there's no guarantee that you can simply walk engineers there as we saw. He, he simply just loses the NGs. Text does. Um, right alt and shift can can else orders for can delete orders for me, but left alt and shift doesn't. You don't delete orders with shift. Or with alt. You delete orders with control shift right click. This Zoo is still alive by the way. Text chasing the air, but he doesn't even have more here. He has seven, there's eight there. Um so Tex takes these three mexes with his commander is okay but uh there's a lot more mexes in the corner like like a lot more and uh yeah all these units on the top side now just push through he can actually run towards the base here he needs to scout And Tex calls GG at this point. I mean, there's really no hope. Um, for one, uh, UEF in both these games. 
is a little strange. Not really sure. Not really sure about that pick. I feel like Seraphim is superior on both of these maps, if only if only a bit, but still. I uh, I'd be interested to know what was banned to allow Seraphim through both times. And then Tagada simply I mean if you like if you don't balance your eco correctly against Tagada <laughs> then uh well good luck. Because that's one thing you can be sure he will do. He will balance his eco correctly. At least, you know, yeah, basically he will. So, you know, you gotta, you gotta get that right at least. You can't be six minutes in with a full mass bar on just an average map. That's already GG, I guess. People don't play Aeon, so why ban it? Yeah, yeah, I think you did waste your bans. Like, you're absolutely correct that you did waste them, to be honest. Also, like, you can't be going around banning factions that you would never choose. Uh, what's up, Test? Welcome, welcome. Wasn't your best series? Yeah, no, that's true. But, uh, yeah. There's simultaneously fear of Aeon plus never wanting to play Aeon, which is obviously nonsensical. And is also why random is the best thing to do on ladder, because unless you're actually playing all the factions, especially Aeon, then you're going to be at a disadvantage when it comes to pick ban in... In, um, in the tournaments. So we got now Tagada's final series in, in Group A. Best of three against Paralon. Tagada at this point with two wins, two, two, two zeros. He is basically through at this point. And he's playing to basically secure a top spot in Group A. Top two qualify for the playoffs, which start in the quarterfinals. So we get two players from each group, A, B, C, and D, leading to four matchups. So. Second air, obviously, we'll see third air. Of course, this map is Osiris. It's got quite a lot of reclaim by 20k, and it's relatively concentrated. See here in the middle. Uh, is this the latest version of Osiris? I thought. Um, I thought. I thought Mosey was gonna make it different, or maybe he did make it different. Are some of these ramps a bit different, perhaps? This ramp here? I can't remember exactly. But uh, yeah, anyway, he, this is a mold, Mad Mosey map. And uh, yeah, second air from both players. Tagged already with a slightly better score. Inti already on this transport. I would not be loading that at this point. Although... I could be wrong about that. Oh, he's very low. But the next Sinti's are slow, and the fact that they're together, they're almost here uh, together, means that probably the first one was idle, if I had to guess. Also, okay, that's insanely ambitious by Tagada. I don't understand why he thinks he can get to the further island there. That was extremely ambitious. He gets punished for it. Here is uh, here are three dead engineers there with the transport. He does land two here, but that was that's the kind of scenario where 
I may not be bringing engineers further. Uh, also, yeah, so that, that hurts a lot. Paralon on the far side, because of the pressure he put on, and the first int he did 400 damage to the transport, he actually manages to get to the further expansion. And, uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure here this this was built by an engineer that walked across. There's a lot of reclaim here that you should be grabbing with, uh, by simply walking another... Transport escapes and Paralon is dropping the the right island as well as he is completely dominated in air in his own base and is forced to build uh, build an anti -air there. He actually is still building air units which maybe he should have stopped making them while he was airlocked because you can see they come out and they instantly are killed so it's not really well you're just getting instantly bad trades so usually better to pause that did Tagada lose another transport where did you see that happen he lost this one did he lose another I didn't see him lose another but he could be right so the NGs were dropped here on this island and that's uh, one NG dead for Paralon. He's now bombing the factory so Tagada not micring the bomber properly. He is dropping though and he wants to fight for this island. He absolutely has to of course. And uh, he is getting a factory up. Oh that's a lot of bombers coming here. Where is Paralon's air? He's absolutely dominated in air so thoroughly that that uh, Tagada is able to build a half dozen bombers and most of them are heading towards this island. Now with that many bombers I believe in his ability to uh, take this island back to be honest with you. Also yeah th very nice engineers in the middle there's two and a half thousand mass here holy shit. Well, that's, that's actually an insane amount of mass. He should actually build a radar here. It's a really good place to have Tech 2 radar. Although it very easily bombed. But uh, that's so much mass in the middle. I didn't realize there was that much there. Now the engineers are dead. Did he accidentally bomb his own engineers? I get the feeling that he bombed his own engines as he was bombing the mechs. Uh, that was an interesting bomb drop. But uh, there's only two factories, so Tagada is going to need. Well, he really should kill these factories. I mean, he has the bombers to kill. Certainly can finish off this factory, as it's already low HP. A few more bombs will take it out. He's not doing that, however. Uh, and then he could move on to this factory. He's sort of been bombing the wrong targets, in my opinion. But some of these bombers are being very annoying. There's two mechs going down to this guy over here. Um, in the airspace, we should have... Yeah, Tech 2 is, is here. Looks like it's only just finished. No Tech 2 engineer out or queued. A little bit of idle time there. Um, and no Tech 2 air from Paralon. Not even queued. Transports flying in various directions. Very slow, both of these guys, to one, build navy. Paralon has built no navy whatsoever, as of now. So Paralon really struggling just to, just, like, mechanically, he needs to be, he needs to have invested in navy already, because there are many, many, many mexes which can be killed by frigates. And, uh... And he's failing to secure, like, he, he's he's losing so many inties cheaply. Like, the, why are there four inties here? They will die and do essentially nothing. Maybe he's trying to snipe the odd bomber or something, but this looks like very random air positioning. Like, Tagada is investing, you know, a couple of inties to try and snipe a transport. That's fair enough. But, um... 
Okay. Are these like... These are weird posts, so I'm just gonna... Remove those. Looks like spam to me. So now gunships from Tagata. The bombers didn't work, but the gunships are very likely to work. So he's got a couple of engineers here. And get a factory. Obviously it's essentially gets get some map control. And he has gotten the three mexes on this side. Now the thing is why I said they're so slow. I mean look, once again, I just want to point out over a thousand mass here. And uh, yeah, so these these places are taken quite slowly. Tagata got to the oh another air fight, and actually this one looks kind of even. Is that actually Parallon? Takes a big air win there. That's absolutely absolutely essential. The gunships begin to <laughs> begin to run, and they shouldn't be able to to escape. The gunships should go down. Should he should chase those with a few inties. But tag it again already restoring the possibility of air control. He's got a lot of inties being produced. Paralon now is tech two only now does he make the tech two P gen. The fact that Paralon had the more eco available to him and he's he's been slower to various areas. He has not taken any of this reclaim. Again, what was that? Two and a half thousand? Uh, he hasn't denied it either. These mechs are easily killable. The engineer is easily killable. And now actually Tagata moves in for the air fight. And will he succeed? Looks like Tagata is going to win that air fight. And right after he loses it, he wins air back again. And we're going to have quite quite a lot of reclaim in this area now from the air fights and the dead units more engineers dropped and Tagata is sadly looking for a place to actually build factories which is a bit, can be a bit tricky on this island but uh, yeah the gunships are here and I feel like this is going to be cleaned up we can see ma much much damage what am I talking about a lot of damage uh on the left hand side of the map also this position again that's killable by frigates these frigates have many many kills like wow 900 and something mass killed is, is pretty insane hmm You'd rather Petrigger Nexus than Tagata UD Turbo or Blackheart. Really? That seems strange to be honest. So Tagata really clawing himself back into this game. Look at the kill ratio by the way. 1.55 versus what was that 0. 0.6 or 0. 0.7 so extremely good kill differential for for Tagata uh, just being more efficient I mean these frigates are helping that's for sure some of these frigates on the left 1361 mass killed what the hell and he's also got some eco going a little bit of tech 2 maxes See a drop here. Was that tech two? No, only tech one. But a uh, nice drop here. There's no defenses. There's no radar. Uh, there's no nothing. Now a very ambitious attack, honestly, for, with these frigates from Tagada. I don't think that this is working out at all for him. He is going to deposit a lot of mass for Paralons. So that's that's going to be quite a 
quite a poor attack there. Look at all these dead frigates. Now they're not all Tagadas, but they're all in. They're they're all they're all for Paralon now. Oh, as Paralon gets crushed in air once again. Another sloppy move, honestly. And uh, Tagadas is looking in a good position. Overall, he takes the score lead now. And Paralon with the Corsairs coming in. I'm not sure what they hit, though. What did the Corsairs attack? Okay, this B-Gen does go down. Uh, there is a shield here, and it's actually upgrading. It's going to upgrade very shortly. And the Corsairs are now dead. Actually, from here, with a frigate, you can probably shoot this C2 PD and yeah we did have a drop here well if you come out with the lowest mass then you need to build more mass extractors just focus on the e economy stop building units and stuff Maxos are your friend so many inties. He definitely needs some air staging now. Tagada does have that habit of flying his entire air force to each location, which leads him with fuel issues. He abuses that uh, select all fighters hotkey, that's for sure. Another drop coming in. He's looking to kill some inties, <laughs> but mainly the. T2 Max. Also, you can see he stands right next to the T2 Max. So if a bomber comes in, or even a Renegade, which has AOE, it will actually bomb the Max. And you can see there, even though he kills the Max anyway, he also gets Paralon to reduce the reclaim that's left from that T2 Max. So that's a good idea when you're raiding in that kind of position. Just park next to the Max. Uh, well when you upgrade maxes is you know the hardest question to answer basically it's do I have time to upgrade maxes that's sort of that's kind of the one phrase answer but of course to answer the question you have to actually have some decent understanding of what's possible in the game Corsair's attacking the left hand side, T2 transport gets taken out as Paralon is preparing more drops, here is one of those drops and it's also spotted so there's some radars around so T2 Max will certainly drop or will it? It's denied, the Corsairs come in and instantly kill stuff is there specific numbers like plus three for biomass, whatever? Um, no. No. Essentially. Uh, the only thing I think of sometimes is like it. You, like. Hmm. To actually give a number, I think you have to be very specific about <laughs> one, what the map is, and two, how you actually play the map. So unless that can be specific, look at all these out of field entities, like please build some air staging, holy crap. Tagged of all of people should be the one building air staging every game on these maps because he is always out of fuel. Uh, yeah, so unless you're, like, there's no general, it's not possible to be general and say, at 100 income, you need, you need to make tech 3 land or have 6 tech 2 mexes or, there, there's really, it's really difficult. What do you look at? The bars filling up. Exactly. I look at the bars filling up. 
That's the number one thing to look at. Am I stalling? Am I floating mass? Am I am I floating power? Am I stalling power? Am I about to get six mexes because I dropped an island? Well, and do I have power? And Tagata wins. Tagata wins from a position where he had actually less mass than Paralon for the entire game. He was down an island for the majority of the game. And uh, he just took many, many better decisions. Small areas were, were improved upon. I mean, this is... I love that this engineer built his mechs and never attack moved. That's kind of hilarious because that's a thousand mass there. But um, he took he took better decisions. He focused heavily on air, made navy a bit faster, and navy allows you to do a lot of damage. Especially on this side of the map, he, he constantly was raiding on this side of the map. Uh, he made air very efficiently, did a lot of damage, so even though he was down two islands, he actually damn it, took away a lot of the mexes on those islands. He also got the mid island mid for free, and the two and a half thousand mass there, and the hydro, so that was huge. Now, Par if Paralon had simply denied some of these things, and, uh, like, he would have been in a much better position, but he was slow to navy, he was slow to tech two air and tech two pgen, which means his eco was less efficient, and, uh, yeah, he he really yeah he 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 gave Tagata room room to play here and Tagata Tagata won and actually after Paralon lost this game he resigned he forfeit the pre, the next game and uh, went out of the tournament. What's up, cousin? Yeah, it's basically test. It's just very difficult to say when you upgrade because it's, you know, it just differs from game to game, uh, map to map. Got an on exception there somehow. Not sure what that's about. Oh, my client closed now. Okay. One moment. Right, so we'll cover the the other games from uh, Group A now. We have Blast Chilled to follow. Yes, Tex. Let's up destroy it. Right, let's let's search for it's okay, so we watched Tex versus Tiger and let's watch Tex versus Parlon. You'll do no such thing, Tex. We're gonna go through your game with Blast on uh, minus one, by the way. <laughs> Tex really liking UEF. I mean, I, I really like UEF in tournaments as well. But, um... Is this the map for UEF? Nothing wrong with UEF here, I guess. Seraphim. Sure. I would be 
attracted to Cybern here. I think, but uh, overall, I think any faction is good actually. On on a map this this generic. So Stefan, uh, eco better than map controlled in most cases. If you can. Mm. Not that's, I don't know. I cannot in good faith endorse what Requiem said. Because I do not understand it. Can't agree with things you don't understand. And that's two kills for that bomber. Not bad, not great. S multiple Selene's on the prowl. And uh, Selene trying to track this mech marine. Selene has slightly more range than the mech marine. So you can see here, Paralon trying to stay on range with it. And he sort of didn't need to, I mean that was actually I just want to say that that was not good for for Paralon there I don't understand why he didn't just he should move to the side here move away from move away from the mech marine. he sees the mech marine, and the mech marine is going to run straight through the expansion so he should really be avoiding the expansion with the engineer until and then just keep tracking the mech. He actually kills the mech with the Selene there. So that's honestly sloppy, in my opinion, and unnecessary. And uh, looks like Tex is winning air here, which is maybe not surprising. Look at the vet actually, vet on the Inties. It's winning air. That's usually what happens if you take out a bomber and stuff. Oh, that's a nice kill. Mech Marine is doing nice. Doing nicely, and uh, bomber from Tex comes in. Will he get this? Oh yeah, Tex, pretty good with the, with the bomber micro. He's still microing. Yeah, Tex has some very nice micro. It says three kills. He actually has four engineer kills, and actually even kills some mechs over here. That's nice. Don't underestimate that mech skill there. Because it's not going to be replaced soon. The engine, the tanks are streaming across this. There's bomber with two kills as well. So expansions delayed all over, and you can see Tex is in one of the expansions with his ACU. This is crucial, and uh, because he's he has one uh, one secured by his commander, which of course is not going to. Be denied by a bomber or a tank and Paralon was late leaving his base which means he's down both expansions because neither of them have been able to actually protect themselves from raids which is I would say a, it's pretty surprising like that also a bomber had like six kills by the way it said four but it had over 300 mass killed which should be six. Six kills, parallel and hero bomber in base. Oh boy, yeah, that's. Oh, and there's also dead pigeons there. Two dead pigeons is huge. Dead engines here, dead engines here. And just a huge lack of build power in the base. Raids avoiding the ACU and aiming for these two vulnerable mechs at the back. That's a, an ant here. <laughs> and uh, yeah, look at this Selene. Two engineer kills for it. At least I assume they're engineer kills. <clears throat> yeah, best way to learn, of course, play regularly. And with, you know, focus. Next thing is watch all of your games after you play them whether you won or lost but especially if you lost and then also watch the best players play and copy what they do 
irrelevant if you think you agree with their play or you don't understand their play simply by doing what they do you can begin to understand so text telling us the power loss hurt he does have a severe lack of power because the the tanks came in and raided three more p gens and you can see what he did he targeted the middle p gen and then he targeted the ones that were weakened by the pigeon explosion. So he's got air pause and he still doesn't have any power available. So this is this is huge. I mean he lost, you know, so many so much here. Still players cannot secure their expansions except with their commanders. That's is that NG really dying? Oh it's close. Oh. oh, that's pain. That hurts. Not sure why there's a whole army here, but okay. Uh, and of course he's definitely not going to be making a transport anytime soon. Why did he not kill the Hydro? What do you mean? This Hydro? Well the Hydro is, just has a lot of health. I mean yeah it's already damaged a bit. I'm not sure how but the Hydrocarbon has quite a bit more health than a regular P gen. I mean, per power generated, it does have less, though. But also, if you kill the Hydro, it's also much cheaper to rebuild. So, killing a Hydro is actually usually not the best thing to do. If you have Tech 1 Pigeons next to each other to kill. Um, so, yeah, this game is a, just an absolute mess. And... These these are like probably the initial two inties because <laughs> they're now out of fuel. They both have two hundred twenty something mass kill, and because they're out of fuel, they can be followed by this uh, <laughs> mobile anti air. <laughs> oh, feels bad. He's trying to run away. But yeah, Paralons. Ooh, somebody build a PD in your expansions, guys. I mean, maybe maybe they just don't have time. But I'm not sure if they're actually. Yeah, this is it's kind of shocking. Like if you, if you look at the map, how do you have 56 tanks and 3 tanks kill one of your two expansions? What? What? No. Am I the only one who thinks that this is a bit that this is a, a, approaching a farce? Let's let's see. What what do you think about this, guys? How many tanks are defending this? Five. Okay. Five of 69 tanks. No radar. I mean, the, the Inties are providing some intel, but like, you know, build a PD somewhere. Like, somebody build a PD. Uh, yeah, exactly, Thomas. There's literally nothing else to fight for. There's some single mexes, but again, virtually all of them are at the back of the base but like just you could literally win this game I think if you just rallied half your factories here and half your factories here and uh, and the opponent apparently just is in incapable of defending so I don't know a bit of a mess honestly Paralon with the no rally points this is a very particular thing to him I don't I don't get it he's the only player I've I've ever seen at this level who just regularly doesn't give rally points. Tex looks like he's about to take a terrible fight here in an expansion that doesn't exist. Well actually these units were not involved but still it's a very bad trade and uh, that's just um, mass donation from Tex there pretty poor but oh my god and what? <laughs> come, come on how is this real? And now Paralon is absolutely alone here. Tex knows it. I mean, well, he kind of knows it. He doesn't build radar. He's from the Blood Ear School of Faf, where you just don't build radar. But he does use Inties to scout, which is the GPG school of of Faf. And uh, Paralon looking very lonely here. Very, very lonely. The poor guy has only enemies in front of him and no support behind him. But yeah, I mean, there's no excuse for not building radar. I mean, sure, I guess 
you didn't have power, but again, that's not an excuse. That's just you didn't have power because you didn't manage your eco correctly or defend against... I mean, tanks can't kill pigeons in your base, okay? That shouldn't be allowed in this kind of map. Um, and Paralon is just going to die to a huge number of units from uh, from Tex. He, he walked so far forward here. And this game, I think, was not particularly well played by actually either player, honestly. Which may sound harsh, but, uh, well, I mean, look, he died halfway across the map and had no expansions to Paralon Tex, you know, is about to lose this expansion, by the way. He only has half of this, so, like, look, come on. I'm not even, I'm not actually going to accept that I'm, I'm harsh there. So, still, Tex did play better. It was a high chaos game. There is no... I mean, look. What I'm saying is... There is no need for that to be a high chaos game. You just didn't defend properly. <laughs> so, let's see game number two. On a map... That I find significantly more interesting. Both microing, yeah, sure, microing the bombers is great, but again, it's not, doesn't mean you get to lose expansions for the whole game. All right. Not scouting radar is just a bad habit, which comes with the hubris of thinking being able to read the opponent. Well, Actually, actually, I I am able to read my opponents, so this is why I don't scout in certain games, and uh, then I just scout at the exact right moment. If you check my tournament history, then uh, you will see that this is confirmed through experience. Um multiple times however these other guys who just lose expansions in a game with in a very simple map that is hubris on their part clearly or a lack of power hmm <laughs> Okay, let's see. We're on De Rosa. De Rosa's Sanctuary. What is the lore of this map, actually? I don't know the actual in-game lore, but it's it's pretty cool. Freaking map. And it's got a great name. So, let me just zoom out and show you. 141,000 mass. That is rather a lot. Field of power gens, what a no-no. Well, you say that. Once again, Tex, Tex is 100% UEF actually in this tournament. So he's obviously copying my strats from previous tournaments. Where I have been fully UEF. However, now this particular map... I'm I'm on board with with UEF here. I think UEF is is the faction I would want here, which makes it interesting that they both have UEF. Because I'm wondering now, what did they ban? What would they actually prefer to have, or or did they both? It's yeah. I can't believe that they both first picked UEF and didn't ban it. So I'm wondering what they what they banned here. Maybe Tex can tell us what he banned, unless he doesn't want to reveal secret information so scout flies overhead for Paralon Ben Sarah eh, I don't really think Sarah's that great here so that's kind of surprising 
I mean, they're fine, but I wouldn't be manning them. Um, Thomas Hyatt's faff name is Thomas Hyatt, actually, funnily enough. So, we're seeing different approaches here. Immediately. One. Oh, yeah, uh, Tess was saying, oh, the field of power gens is not advisable. In most normal circumstances, it isn't. In this circumstance, where you want to build the pigeons as fast as possible, you should actually build them very close together. Maybe not in the grid, because he still had to walk a little bit, but you want to build the pigeons close together so your engineers don't walk as they're building. There's a huge difference in efficiency between, say, if you build pigeons like this, like, say, you build pigeons all in range so they don't have to move and building them in a line where they're gonna have to build a few build to walk build to walk it's far less efficient to do that so especially in the start of a map where you have 140,000 mass building the pigeons as fast as possible is extremely important so you take you just take on the risk that there's a there's a small chance that your pigeons get bombed but it's the risk is actually, the reward actually outweighs the risk significantly there. So, the, the different approaches people have gone for here. Parallon is gone for the faster drop to the expansion. And Tex is going for the slower drop, which actually may not even happen because there's Inti's over his head. But uh, he's gone for the slower drop and instead is just using the reclaim in his base and attempting to scale very quickly in his main base. He's building an anti-air now. Which is a good move. I mean, it's really... A lot of things are way less expensive on this map. <laughs> like, opportunity cost is actually very low if you do, for building a building an anti-air to just keep air units away. It's, there, it's not as much of a decision as doing it on other maps. But, um... Yeah, he's just deciding to scale much more quickly. Which he can do by, you know, not investing in a transport early doesn't invest in in uh, engineers flying across the map early where they obviously can't build anything as they're flying across the map so he can scale faster in his main and I think that's a pretty solid approach there's two bombers just came in and instantly vaporized the drop from Paralon he did not cover himself with inties there and paid the price there's already a lot of bombers out from from Tex he's got one two three air factories actually one is idle and uh yeah if you if you look into this main base very impressive number of factories significantly more power for techs and i'm pretty sure this is going to be the tech factory that's building extremely slowly which means he's stalling hard core 15 mass income lull and minus 100 <laughs> minus 100 man <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, you, you you really can't you really can't stop reclaiming at any point early on. This is also the downside of not dropping is you're you're not going to have these mixes and so you're going to have virtually no income that aside from aside from the reclaim. You're just going to have like 6 or 7 mixes. That's that's pretty much all he has. They're all tech one. Eight mechs. Eight tech one mechs right now. Wait, does he have eight? Am I crazy? That's six, seven. Oh no, that's seven, eight. Sorry. I am crazy. And yeah, he's on the way to tech two. He's now you can see he's getting a lot of reclaim finally. So he definitely was a gap there in the reclaim, which hurts greatly. Pyrlon on the other side has scaled as you can see he has a lot less going on in his base right now he has sort of he's catching up in power he's making his tech 2 pigeon now he's gone for tech 2 air and tech 2 land is only started now we're at 7 minutes 20 so that's quite a slow tech 2 land i'd say and he is struggling for power right now he's now the, the other scaling he's doing is of course in this base where he's getting well, he's quite slow with the mexes, but he is getting a lot of factories. And also, he's grabbing the reclaim here, so he still has more available next to his base than, than Tex will have. But it was extremely critical that Tex 
killed the drop so easily. It was surprising, and he actually, actually there was another drop that he's now killed. It was surprising that Tex didn't have any units here, because he spawners could have been shot down, there were Inties, and if they had been, then he could have been actually in a really, a really bad spot, to be honest. But that didn't happen. But again, you have to expect that there's a chance your bombers could get shot down. And uh, that's why basically tanks are much more reliable at denying drops. And you can certainly have a tank or even some labs there in that position. So he's getting factories up. He's upgrading factories to Tech 2, which is very important as well. You want, you know, support factories in the expansions. You ex absolutely have to. And Paralon trying to do some some attack up at the top side with tech on land. I mean, it's, it doesn't really seem to be very threatening. Tech three land is one third of the way completed. There's still no tech two air for techs. He's got two tech two pigeons. And uh, yeah, a lot of, we have some random bombers everywhere. And actually, there's a Janus that's quite random as well. It just gets shot down without doing anything. So really, not a good use of Janus. One Janus on its own is, is pretty much crap. Unless it can find a huge clump of engineers to bomb. I don't really like single Janus attacks. I really don't find them very effective. Five Janus attacks. A lot more threatening. And yeah, both of them rushing Tech 3 land, which is the go-to strategy on this map, is to, is to rush Tech 3 land. Rushing meaning getting it, you know, around 10, 11, 12 minutes usually is what people get it. You can get it a little bit faster, but at this point it looks like 11 minutes for both of them, pretty much. And both players kind of just trying to make sure that they're scaling their economy. Uh, securing their expansions and uh, Paralon, let's see what he's doing. Yeah, he's getting a lot of Tech 2 Maxes in the expansion. You really have to be careful about how you manage your eco in this in this map because wow, Tex has a huge advantage in the in the kills actually. Although the mass mass is essentially equal. I like these uh, energy storages. Tex has T2 and gun for some reason. Not sure why. Really not sure why actually. But uh, he's struggling to secure this expansion. This expansion is actually quite vulnerable because people will attack through the middle or if they come through the side they can just take a turn and it's hard to actually, can be hard to defend that actually we can see both of them just attacking that exact position and tech 3 units can be heard. Titans coming out of the T3 land factory absolutely understandable decision to go for for um, Titans first. I think we'll see quite a few Titans here and that's what I really like to see though. Tech 3 mechs for Tex. And uh, tanks over here. Killing a Tech 2 mechs. That's a nice drop. It should, I mean if it... Oh wait. Is it gonna die? Oh my god. Yeah, you see if this was if there was one Lobo in here, this would have died a long long time ago, but there was not. There were only tanks and uh, they failed to kill the the mass extractor. So that's a little bit sad. So, pushed back from this position is Tex and the the Titans are looking for some damage. He's going to try and clean up some Tech on Mexes. The bombers are attacking the Titans, but with shields, it's very difficult to actually kill titans with just a few bombers. You need a lot of bombers because the shields will regen very quickly and of course they can dodge bombers extremely well because they're so fast. So tech 3 max is the way for Paralon. You can see he is behind in the tech 3 max game that's for sure but he's got the f full tech 2 max and one ringed mechs in the top side and now he's pushing in multiple places I'm very 
interested in where people are putting their units. One, Tex is overflowing insane levels of power. This is what I was talking about, where you have to be careful how you scale your eco. I didn't finish that point, but like if you're still making pillars too late into the game, if you're still making tech one too late into the game, aside from like Lobos, although Lobos, I don't really think you should make Lobos when it's all about Titans because Lobos are, are going to be terrible. He's also not built T2 Max in this expansion. And uh, he's after losing a lot of his Tech on Max on the map. He's going to lose more of them. This one getting reclaimed. Um, it's a lot of dead Maxes for him. So the reclaim runs out. I mean, there's actually still reclaimed. A significant reclaim here to fight for, which he's actually taking some of it somehow. Just reclaim here. He's recycling some factories which is good but um okay nice he finished another tech 3 max that's going to be very helpful and now actually the tech 2 and gun seems like a smart decision he shouldn't really be retreating here oh we didn't want to track him actually but uh yeah that's a that's a that's a big army, and I I'm so confused by w where these units are. There's also no radar on the bottom side. I just want to point that out. Like, also, why is there Tech Three anti air? Well, there is actually Tech Three air for Parallel. I don't see a P Gen on the radar on the, but uh, he does have Tech Three Tech Three air actually production going now. This factory should be going to to Tech Three support now. Parallel has a similar issue of just overflowing power and. You know, stalling mass. But again, what, what, where are his units going? What are they supposed to be doing here? Certainly, this group has been all around the houses and has killed many mexes. This army, sort of menacing, but again, if you park yourself outside the enemy base. The only thing that's likely to happen is that eventually you donate all this mass here. So it's a bit of a struggle. He's dropping a tech three land unit into the base here. That be that is Oh my god. Micro it. Oh my god, that's that's upgrading to tech three. <laughs> oh my god, that hurt. Nice overcharge. And another one. Disgusting auto overcharge, but still there here comes another drop and that's a dead tech two max, finally that one that was damaged earlier goes down. Now he's actually pushing in. Now this is this is the problem. But that is so many lobos. Here's the thing, you don't need to come down here actually to do damage. The thing is, he could stand up here and shoot down. These factories would be fantastic to kill. You see these Tech 3 land factories? Very expensive. He can also kill the units building inside of them as they're under construction. And I think that would be a great target for the Lobos. Now he's giving move orders just directly into the base and... Uh, not sure what he's going to kill here. Because there's PDs he's running into. The pathfinding is absolutely appalling right here. This this just doesn't look like the Lobos are in position to do damage. What is he killing? There's some Tech 1 Pigeons dying. Nobody cares about those anymore. And uh, he could have, in my opinion, just targeted the Tech 3 Sport Factories. Could have potentially attacked the HQ, but that's unlikely to have died. But now there's, there's just nothing. Okay, these fucking... Spam bots. In the chat. And, uh, yeah, that was a very bad attack. I mean, it was amazing drops here. Especially that first one where he killed the Tech 3 Max. But, um... The attack after that is... Well, it's questionable. And in the meantime, Tex has been roaming around the map. Oh! Two very low HP broadswords trying to be sniped by Tex. 50 HP! One shot from an Inti and it'll drop. 
That's a lot of broadswords there. See a lot of reclaim here. That's a, that's one of the broadswords dead there. And yet, yeah, both these players making interesting moves with their units. It looks like there was also there was an attack through here. That's dead. Dead stuff. It looks like it was defended by broadswords. There's really very little production in the main base of land. There's one factory. There's he's now upgrading. Okay. Uh Parlon making one, two, three, four tech three factories in his base. That's not gonna be affordable, honestly. I don't understand why he thinks he can afford that. And he only has he only has two tech three factories at the moment, and he can't afford to actually produce them and eco. So it's really strange that he would try and make four more. That's a bit crazy. Texas finally upgraded some of these mexes up to tech two. And uh, yeah, the broadsword's doing well. I think he should commit to this. I mean, what? There's two flags here, maybe? Is that, uh, that looks like there's just two flags, so he should definitely be using these. Like, what? Oops, wrong player. Two flags. There's more on the way, of course, but certainly damage can be done. This expansion, what is here? There is a Sam. Actually, there's a Sam here as well. This Sam is very vulnerable. Being the miners' adversary, he always wants to just be occupied by dumb point and stuff. Well, you know what? That's actually... kind of accurate um maybe even very accurate well adversary maybe is a strong word but anyway let's focus on the game uh that was a nice bomb from the from the strat let's keep that alive it's gonna get it's gonna need a I mean, he's got so much air, so much air. That, but where, where can he use it? This is the question. Can he secure this reclaim? It looks like this is some very nice reclaim for Parlon. Parlon looking to be in a really good position. These fucking spam bots. Nice reclaim here, nice reclaim here. Parallon, 30k mass ahead, but his, I mean, and he's got the air control. He is gonna, gonna actually waste the strat though. He might he might waste both strats actually, oof. Yeah, the, three strats? He's gonna waste three strats? Oh, please, no. This strat, Oh, it actually escapes. It sniped the tech three anti air, but uh, he needs he needs um, oh, it's auto attacking a tech one tech one radar now. That one just bounced off the mountain and bombed the mountain as well. And the other strat is now dead, and so all of this air it's it's been used really poorly. What could have been done once you have if you have three strats, you can one shot. Uh, Sam so he could come in here one shot the Sam and then he could simply just bomb the factory again one shot it with three strats use all of his ASF to defend it and uh, bomb both these factories and uh, he's in an extremely good position because it's very difficult to reinforce that position once the factories are dead so bombing the the, the way he used the strats was very very wasteful Yeah, Thomas is basically, as, as he says, talking about sort of Buddhist philosophy, where you're... You're not your thoughts. Basically, you're a separate entity, which actually does ring pretty true, in my opinion. So yeah, Parlon 
I think the the wastefulness of the of the strats, the the gunships have gone done some good damage, but again, not not they haven't what you're really looking for. And as we just watch the top side be crushed by by Tex, is what you're looking for when you actually have the air control. You have to make some really decisive victories like Paralom is kind of just doing a little bit of damage here or there and also then ended up wasting them like you, you he didn't really have a goal that he wanted to fulfill like if you could come in here with the strats and bomb these factories and then subsequently bomb you know maybe the Percy's or the Mexes then that's that's a goal that is actually presenting a win condition. He didn't really seem to have a proper goal for his for his strats. Now he's dropped in some Percy's. This is really nice reinforcement. It's a bit too late. Um, but he is going to get a really nice uh, reclaim field out of this. So we're just about to go down in 10 minutes and kill all games. Um, okay, well let me... I think I can... Download a replay. To watch. Oh, it opened the replay. Let's, let's, hmm. Also, who's making that post? Who's signed in? Is that Brutus? <laughs> Hello. Or maybe someone else. Here's a nuke. For... Paralon. He's going for a nuke now. He loses his whole expansion and then and then he begins begins a nuke. Again, theme of this game seems to be unnecessary damage being taken. 33 Percy's by the way. Oh, it's Roy. Hello Roy. 24 Percy's and only 10 Titans so certainly a stronger army for Paralon. Um... How do you only give move orders in air fight? You need a move order hotkey, basically. That's the only way to avoid contextual commands. These two things, look at them. 800 mass apiece. My god. But what, where, where are these units? How, how are they even here? These, these are the kind of, this is the other thing that you can do with the, if, when you have air control, you can, oh my god. Paralon just, got brutally crushed in air and I have no idea why oh my god that's a devastating move and is all this this whole Percy army just forced to retreat now that is absolutely brutal that air that air win is I mean, and look <laughs> How? How does Paralon lose the whole expansion, have more units, and then is denied from regaining the expansion? By the way, look at this fight. Extremely good fight here. For... Wait, hang on. Extremely good fight for, for Tex here.
Yes, there are no successful people in uh, on FAF, this is well known, so... I plan what I'm going to think all the time, I don't think that may <laughs> that doesn't really make any sense to me, to be honest. really doesn't make any sense to me. Tech's wasting a little bit of air, but he still has complete air control and he just dropped a mass of Percy's to the front and is just walking into the main base. Continentals are one of the greatest things about UEF in these scenarios. Oh. Goodbye. Goodbye to your entire base, courtesy of Tech 3 Transports and Percival's. And that's the game. Quite a nice game. Uh, correct, Nick. was the tipping point well um i would say the waste of the lack like parlon was in control but he lost control by not using his air properly wasting all those strats huge investment there um losing this expansion i mean he there really wasn't he he didn't have less units essentially he had them in the wrong place. He might have had slightly less, but if you have slightly less units, you don't lose your expansion. So he didn't have. He he shouldn't have lost this expansion, and um, and then he actually failed to regain it, and then has gone gone for this nuke, which was terrible. And then yes, as Tech said, losing the air fight was extremely painful, but I think it was already. He had already lost control at that point, is why I, I would say. It was um, like he had already lost control. And then the, the air fight and the continental drop was a very nice move. But the mistakes, the, the worst mistakes, I think, came actually before that. <laughs> Although that air fight was, was, <laughs> that was a really nasty mistake. Um, <laughs> yeah, good one, Rekia. Some sleepy human, yeah, they're, they're usually very violent. Um, attacking your base, well, I don't think it was really game changing. It was a bad, it could have done way more damage, but it was mostly just artillery and like, it was just artillery and maybe some pillars. There wasn't even really many tech three units. Um, mm, mm. Also, yeah, the whole uh, talking about are you your thoughts and ideas is pretty interesting. I think, you know, I think Thomas is actually correct about it. That you're not, you can't actually, dis you can't, well, it comes down to you can't decide what your next thought is going to be actually it's simply thoughts simply appear and i think this is pretty factual
Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, it seems like I can't watch replays now, actually. Damn, I should have started this replay bef just before. I wanted to start this replay, actually, just before the server restart. I should have done that. Damn. Okay, let me just go on to Zulip and see what what they're saying. If there's a time. Implications that you are your choices. Uh, mm, you are the thing that can make choices. You're not really your choices. I mean, your life is your choices, I suppose. But you're the thing that is capable of making choices, I guess. Let's see. Uh, I don't think, no, I don't think having it locally actually matters because I have downloaded that one from the server. Getting censored on YT. I mean, I don't know. Server. Is there anything about the server update on Zulip? I don't see anything there. Sadly. Your results of electrical impulses in your prime. Well, that's no, not really. If. thoughts just appear and you just choose from what's given well obviously if you're choosing then uh, well you can choose how you react to the thoughts I suppose that's that's what you do <clears throat> And it doesn't really make sense any other way, if you think about it. Uh, yeah, I don't actually see anything about like a timeline for this. Could also be in a simulation, sure. I mean, you know, there's no reason to believe that, but you know, it's possible. Server update Sunday planned between 10 and tw wait, 8 and 10 UTC. Yeah. Sam Harring. You mean Sam Harris? That guy is terrible. Sam Harris is absolutely atrocious. He's actually just incapable of philosophical thought. So, I wonder how long it will take. Jordan Peterson. Jordan Peterson is not bad. He's also kind of, I mean, you know, he's definitely better than Sam Harris, that's for sure. I mean, anyone's better than Sam Harris. What shall we do?
The problem is when you try to open a replay on Faf, you um it wants to check for check that you're on the right patch with the server. So when the server is down, it can't make sure that the replay is on the right patch so you can't actually open replays. This is the issue. Uh oh, says Peter. Uh oh, what? <laughs> what? Uh oh. Playing some two v two as well. I can't. I can, we can't play. Another client? No, no. Doesn't matter what client. I wonder actually if I can watch it through my. Hmm. Oh yeah, I can do this actually. I think I can do this. Um, I. Th I think so. I think I just need to put the replay into... Can't you just cancel the pop of the chicks for updates? I don't think so. I will try that. Play AoE, no. I think I just need to put it into the... Let me see. there be a Chinese server? I think there's a Chinese server. There's not a Chinese FAF server, but they use the FAF patch of some description. So what, where do I, where is this? Oh, they're introducing Jordan Pugh. Yeah, I, I guess he's Controversial, but he, I, I mean, there's very little. Does that mean? I don't know. He's, he's too boring. To, he really shouldn't be controversial. Honestly. Just funny. Um. And yeah, I mean, I, I don't think he's just really that, um. Correct about most things. Uh, what are you trying to do? I'm I'm trying to put a replay in, watch a replay while a uh, faff is down. So I think I need to campaign. <laughs> I think I need to find where faff is installed. Oh, I need to rename it to dot scfa. Is that all I need to do? Is that what you mean? It's a bad... Okay, let me try and do this. Steam apps common for... Okay, yeah. Let's go... Let's try this way. Hmm. Where's the replay folder here? Uh, there's no replay folder actually. Where? Yeah, well, here, here's here's the thing though. I this th what I have open here is actually no, not campaign. What I have open here is faf patch. Oh, it's the wrong patch. 
I could update it though. I just need to find the replay folder, I guess. Actually, that's. I don't know, I'm terrible at this. I don't have a brain. It's not even going to be in the. It's going to be in a different place. It's not going to be where FA is installed. You got 50 to 100 people playing on the Chinese one? Damn. Pretty sure I can do this. Let me see. Let's go. Where is it? Let's go here. Because there is a replay here, but where did where did it come from? Where is it actually stored? God damn. It's annoying. Right, I'm gonna go to the bathroom and think about it there. BRB. <laughs>
Off team looking for can find the page in Oh, if you go to the you go to the promotions discord the localization is there okay let's try what Zol's talking about here oh yeah 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 there you go Still need to convert replay on packet. Mm. What's up, Mazer? Yes, absolutely. It's a it's a separate Discord test. It's not the FAF Discord. It's the promotion FAF Promotions Discord. It's a Forte. Yeah, I have no idea how to what to do with this. Oh, hey, we're back. I want to try something. <laughs> oh, you'll have to select a role actually for localization for them to show up, I think. Uh anyway. That was uh that was only like 15 minutes or so, I think. So, we spent all that time and we didn't quite figure out how to do that maybe we'll figure it out some other time at least Zlo helped us find the actual place where those replays are stored three hundred Percy's versus twenty monkey lords bet on three hundred Percy's uh yeah that's about right Text, there's nothing you can say to make me not watch this. Literally nothing. Literally. So, we've seen uh, many players, many games so far. Now we have the most uh, eagerly anticipated of all Group A games. How long is this going to be? Don't spoil anything. But uh, we will not be watching in zero. <laughs> I can tell you that. So, uh, Sabre 1996. Super Chat 10 Euro. Thanks for the cast. Looking forward to this match. 
Thank you very much for the donation. So we got Tex, who we saw defeated Blast Chilled. Uh, sorry, defeated Paralon, 2-0, quite impressively, and uh, lost to Tagada. We are on Mentor, a map created by Chosen, and this map is very... It's quite difficult, has featured on my channel a few times. There is one game where I calm dropped into Turbo's base, which is very entertaining, you should check out. And uh, yes, yeah, so we have a lot of mass here, we have bases in the, in the corner, there's water all around the map, it's 20 by 20. So the playing area is pretty much 15 by 15. Um, the water is not really a relevant factor in pretty much any game I've seen. But there's so much mass here. So many bases, so many drops to be done. We also have some civilians. Capturable flak, which is a feature on multiple of um, Chosen's maps. There's also capturable stealth, which is very nice. And also, I mean, it's actually just underutilized by players who do play this map, actually. So we got three factories, two land, one air for Tex. Blast with uh, the same, but all of them in the center base, not in the main base, not adjacent to the hydrocarbon. What are the civilian structures in the water? They, oh yeah, we have sonars over there. And there's also land scouts here so a bit of reclaim about eight over 8k here so also not heavily concentrated so it's uh, reclaim not a huge factor but certainly you're gonna need to pick some of it up like a um, text shouldn't really be walking past all of this but okay he's heading to this expansion to secure it with the Commander, when capturing, does it consume just energy or both energy mass? It consumes just energy. And it consumes energy at twice the rate of building. And takes half the time. So, for example, building a factory with a Tech 1 NG consumes 35 energy. Capturing in it, and it takes, what? a minute for one engineer to build a factory so it takes a minute and it's minus 35 if you're capturing it would drain 70 power and it would complete in 30 seconds assuming you don't stall and consume zero mass so capturing is very powerful actually if you are in a position to do it so it looks like we had a raid here. Very nice kill by, by Blast, actually. But a uh, nice use of the Mantis to finish off that mechs. Of course, they won't be able to build the other one. But um, quite nice to to be able to finish off that mechs. Both players have Cybran. The size of the map lends itself to, you know, the speed the speed of the tanks because it's quite a very spammy map you have to invest a lot into units there's not much ecoing to be done early on there's a lot of spamming to be done because there's so much mass everywhere so many mechs to fight for that you really have to have units in all areas attacking and defending so you can see many factories planned t1 spam is the the name of the game and I'm already basically shocked that there's no transport because again it's let's say 15 by 15 land this is just gonna be reclaimed no point really in in uh, capturing it uh, yeah so the transports are absolutely needed to cover the distance now here finally we have a transport for for blast first I don't see one from Tex at the moment should pick up this definitely should pick up this other NG come on 
yeah, dropping, picking up three NGs at this moment in time is just shows that you sort of didn't plan it out correctly, honestly. You really should have a full transport at this stage of the game. Early on, you could say, well, I need some NGs in the base and I don't have enough NGs, but at six and a half minutes, you gotta have the NGs ready. So, three NGs on board a transport is a bit wasteful. Also, the positioning of the drops. Questionable. 300 mass, that's nice. One mex here, and maybe less than 300 mass here. I don't really find that too compelling of a drop. And overall, the game so far quite even. Slightly more mass for Blast Chilled, but uh, lacking this expansion. Slower with the AC here. Random bomber doing damage, and I need to speed this game up. Just realized. Thomas would like to talk about. Uh, Buddhism, I guess. <laughs> Civ transport near the base. I mean, there's. Oh, that's an air win for. For Tex. And winning air, quite valuable. I'm not seeing much, you know. Well, I'm not seeing a transport for Tex, which is the most surprising thing. I'm, I'm not really seeing... Looks like a decent micro from Tex. You can see how he moves away from the larger force of units. And he's constantly getting, you know, decent trades. And here he'll probably just retreat away as, as now Blast gets a couple of good kills. But overall, if Blast... Blast, at this point, once you see a retime field like that, you should probably just finish this base here. And then just walk back. Walk back to here with the ACU and suck all up suck up that master. But um use the ACU to secure the, the reclaim field. But uh yeah, I'm really surprised now we we do have some bombers. That's what I was hoping to see. Some kind of bombers in different areas because chasing them down with Inties is slow and actually very APM intensive to break off one, two Inties. Because, again, you can't be sending your whole air force after a single bomber. Very, very, very good fight for Tex there. He absolutely rolled over this army. Took almost no kills. And uh, these factories that have just been built are at severe risk. And there's no PD here either to defend the expansion. So this could be huge losses on the on this side of the map for, for Blast Shield already. And on the top side, his unit's maybe out of position. He's now getting this reclaim. Well, he will be in... A, shortly from this factory but uh yeah do you recommend a 30 plus inch or 24 inch screen for that um i have no idea actually and yeah also it depends on the resolution oh text coming in after blast chills acu that's really ambitious at this stage in the game to go for an acu kill i mean he is taking a lot of damage blast doesn't have overcharge he could have killed maybe 10 mantas at once there but he doesn't have overcharge but his reinforcements have have arrived i mean they were in the area he's just god damn he lost so much health that's actually a bit a bit insane that he lost so much health here but turns out to be a mass donation and he does have cyber and regen so will re regen faster and actually all these factories have gone down look at the reclaim fields it's just six and a half k mass here he doesn't kill the expansion though and now he's he's really run out of units and What's the ACU doing? Now, if in the meantime we'd seen Tex making Tech 2 and his ACU or something, like I feel like you, Tech 2 and the ACU is, is actually quite useful on this map, to be honest. He could have, you know, he could have then shown up here and secured the reclaim field. But now, I mean, Blast has access to so much reclaim. Attacking on both sides of the map at the same time that is, you know, most of the time, a huge overcommitment. And uh, if you attack on one side, you can be, you know, more sure that you're actually attacking into a place that you can, you know, overrun perhaps. Or if you attack on both sides, it's very unlikely you win on both sides. It's actually more likely that you lose on both sides than you win on both sides. Thanks to Defender's Advantage. So Tex just made some very questionable decisions there. Blast, however, is happy to donate mass once again. 
in return. Now, the air fight looking quite even, but again, that's another that's a donation into Texas territory. So even if it comes out even, it's a win for Tex in, in the end. Like Blast really had to just dominate air there to make it worth it. Now we have gunships on Texas ACU again. No upgrades on that commander. And he actually decides not to go after the commander anymore. Goes to start raiding some mexes. I think actually having two mexes in the two gunships in the same area is, is actually not the best way to go about it. You should be splitting. Yeah, this is nice. This kind of use of gunships on this map is very strong. I mean, look, there's mechs here, 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 and here, and there's no anti-air anywhere. All, if you could have gunships in various locations doing, doing damage, it's very hard to stop them all. Two gunships in the same location, and they've actually been shot down, although Texas losing air once again. And look at all the reclaim. Just out 12k in this area. 12,000 mass. And Blast has 57k. He has 12k more mass. Also in this area. 8.5k. And look at the reclaim count. 14k for Blast. 5.5 for Tex. That is so painful. And Blast has run all the way back into the water. He should make stealth. And then he'll be extremely... Extremely safe. Because he'll be very difficult to find. Tex is getting torpedo bombed. Excuse me? Oh no, the, the anti-air is getting torpedo bombed. And the Corsairs are coming after Tex's commander. He's down to 2.6k. But uh, wins air and... There is no chill. Absolutely no chill in this game. Both these guys are just constantly fighting and fighting and fighting. And committing and committing and committing. And uh, look, at the, this is such a gigantic recon field. This is some heinous carnage going on on both sides relentlessly. And finally, Tech 2 Land is going to appear <laughs> at 18, 19 minutes. We finally see some some tech two land. Still no tech two land from from blast chill. I would definitely be considering you know once you have three k mass in the bank, he needs to throw down another P gen asap. Every engineer in the base should be building this tech two P gen and uh, maybe well you should actually queue up two tech two P gens right now with this eco, and I would be definitely on the way to tech two land, possibly possibly quickly into tech 3 land right after that uh, Tex is going to make some rhinos he does not have the luxury of having 3k mass in his bank it's a bad thing if you have 3k mass in the bank and you are losing ground if you're maintaining ground and you have 3k mass in the bank that's just options that just means well how about I just you know now I can now I can make decisions about where to invest that if you're floating mass and you're losing ground then you simply have been too slow in spending it. Tex, is, is he running over this? Is he completely running over this? Kind of looks like he is. My god. My god, yeah, there's the next Tech 2 Pigeon on the way. And guess who else is getting run over? That's right. Tex on the opposite side is getting run over. Nice 15 kill. Tech 2 PD. This, art, this, this PD already has 15 kills now. It's pretty good, but it will go down. 18, 19, 20, 21. Please kill it. Oh my god, he didn't kill it. 23. 24. 25. <laughs> Jesus. That was, that was so nasty. And now a big air fight. Looks like Tex is winning this again as the gunships go to work on the Tech 1 land. Tech 2 cyber gunships are fantastic against Tech 1 land units with their with their AOE. And this is this is just insane carnage. The rhinos are here though. They're gonna mince some uh, some Tech 1, but look, PDs the ultimate enemy of a rhino. Tech 1 PD. Last year does have stealth. I, I appreciate it, and he is going to Tech Three land now. He doesn't doesn't hang around at Tech Two stage. He he has three K mass in the bank. He has 
look at this. Tech 2 maxes in various locations. This map control looks okay. However, the eco is quite nice. He does not know what, what Tex has here. Tex does certainly have four Tech 2 maxes in his core base. I don't think he has anything beyond that. No, he doesn't. Tex is actually under attack once again from some Tech 1 units. And he's, he also has stealth. Another nice advantage of Cybern to just be able to hide in water very effectively. But uh, yeah, he's going to have to really micro these, these rhinos carefully because that's that's really all he has available to him. Is he going tech 3? He is. Loyas will be on patrol soon. He's got tech 2BD in the base to prevent too much damage from potential drops or rogue units appearing. And uh, he's, he's crushed this side. The power of the rhinos here. He's got 9 rhinos. Completely crushed this and gained huge amounts of... of Reclaim, and you can see this is a nice move that where he's he's built a lot of engineers to get the reclaim, and so then what he does, he sees his mass is high, he just throws down a factory, immediately upgrades the deck two, and starts spamming from the front line, and he's actually making Wagner's, which, and that's kind of a nice move here. It means he can go through this location, that is water there, and he can run and attack into the base with uh, with Wagner's can also run through these ponds and also hide from from units where he may get overrun if it was a rhino with Wagner's he can dip into the water and, and uh, be very annoying so that's quite a nice move frigates and a <laughs> submarine for some reason for blast frigates could give some decent little bit of info I wouldn't make too many yeah he's actually not building anymore there's a tech one bomber just out of fuel with 1300 Holy fuck. 1,387 mass killed. Now it's just bombing a Tech 1 naval factory. That's interesting. Oh, good damage here. Tech 2 mechs have been found and marked to be killed. Will they go down or will the Inti save it? Oof, close one. Well, that Tech 2 mechs is saved. These ones are safe. That's actually Tech 3 factory there, which is a really... It's a... Solid way to defend. That's Tech 3 Factory on the front line. Loyalists running in around the brick. And will the brick die? No, it doesn't. I think the engineers did a lot of reclaim damage to the lawyers there as they ran in, which is pretty cool move. This factory should be TML'd. That's what I would like to see here. If we look at the... Where are the Tech 2 engineers? As we see an attack up there with a lot of rhinos and some loyalists. Where are the Tech 2 engineers? That's a Tech 3 mechs on the way. Nice. Another good move at this stage of the game. Yeah, if you look, he can TML from the base and kill this factory in one shot. That would be a really nice move just to get rid of that. Because that is very annoying, that factory. On the top side, just power mainly of rhinos. The loyalists also doing good damage, but... But it's mainly the rhinos doing doing the work here and showing the teching up maybe should have been done a bit sooner for blast certainly and maybe even for for tex because the rhinos have done huge work for him and now he's got a lot of reclaim available blast is is struggling now at this point because getting pushed back on both fronts and tex is invested into a tex remax so looking a little bit dicey but actually in the bottom corner we had a lot of damage many many mechs is here and this this lawyer is looking for huge damage and these all these mechs are upgraded and there's nothing around no defenses whatsoever you can also see the frigates actually are managing to kill the odd mechs here and there let's look at the the land force here why is blast ace you in the water for safety um 23,500 mass in units versus 18.5, so certainly much more mass in units for Tex right now. Tex now falling away. He needs to definitely regroup and get, get some more units going. But still building Rhinos, which is not really what he should be doing. Should be full on to tech 3 and then maybe just you know flax and some stealth in there would be good random tech 1 and tech 2 units dropped in here not sure what they're gonna do they could run towards the main base but that doesn't seem like it's 
actually going to do anything. Blast has lost this position. It was only tech 1 maxes. All of these tech 3 maxes go down. And it's this lawyer that's still alive. It's killed these two. Killed two more maxes. It's got 13 kills. 2,268 mass killed. And it's still alive. And he doesn't know where it is anymore because there's no radar around. Oh! Tex just runs into the base with those dropped units. Going after Tech 2P Gen kills some of his own units to, to, to get rid of that. Uh, or as he gets rid of that. And that's pretty much all she wrote. A few engineer kills aside from that. Is that worth it? Not sure what, what happened to these bricks though. That's what I'm wondering. Did Tex send bricks through the water into the main base and just lose them? Is that what happened? I'm not sure. Difficult to see. Well, there's so much tech one. The rhinos certainly will, can contribute. Not like this, they can't. Killed from out of range by bricks, but they're useful to have in this army. But they have to be used correctly. And it's last that has the superior number of high tech units, and he's using them well. Pretty good micro here, with the bricks, getting a lot of free kills. Stealth would also avoid a lot of these free kills that are happening. Oh, Tex getting into range now. This blast messed up his micro. He needed to keep retreating. The loyalists also... Oh, loyalists are going to provide some stuns with their deaths, but that's all. The Once you're getting close, the rhinos and the mantis will actually contribute significantly, and that's a big... That's a big lost fight there for, for Blast. He had to stay away. Very ugly shift G order there, which I never like to see, but everyone does it. Oh my god, this loyalist is still alive! It's got 4,300 mass kill. They killed this max. It has to have killed that max as well to have that much mass kill. It's full HP, or rather, not even full HP. It's far healthier than a, than a regular loyalist. It is a five-star veteran. These bricks cannot be lost. He needs to retreat here. Blast is taking some really bad trades. He has, he can't afford to keep losing bricks in bad trades here. There's, there's no value in having two bricks here and four bricks here. You have to have all the bricks together. There's no, there's almost no such thing as flanking in, in Forge Alliance. Also, he has a huge number of bricks that have to be pushed. This is, this is an insane army. He's got 11 bricks here. Problem is Intel, but the, these bricks have to do some serious damage because they're missed here. They're really missed here. If he had, if he had, you know, half these bricks here, which he easily could have, um, then there's huge potential for absolutely game-winning victories because a victory won right next to your base is so much more valuable than winning some victory over here where, you know, after you win, it's still up in the air who gets the reclaim. The, this, this loyalist still lives. It's getting bombed. Oh, it's dying to, to bombers and the rhinos have stopped chasing. Blast saying how much mass killed this this loyalist has it has 5300 oh it's getting bombed he's dodging it's got 30 per second regen oh <laughs> god damn tex looking to donate some mass to this insane army of bricks blast looking to avoid accepting donations i mean the simply blast just walks into this kills everything but no. And uh, yeah, Texas is stealing so much mass and, and winning so many fights. It's a lot of bombers coming in, but there's flak here. Flak is going to get a lot of kills. There's also tech one anti-air as well. And maybe this is where Tex donates all that mass that he's been threatening to donate. Honestly, he's been fortunate to have gotten so many good fights right next to the base here. And now his luck might be running out of blasts. You know, not using his units to the fullest. Like he's got three bricks here. He's got four bricks, one brick there, three bricks here, some bricks here. If he just brings them together, 
bring them all together, walk your way through the, this, this expansion, and continue on. See how far you can get because you have the units to do it. On the top side, he has units to march forward. So what does Tex have in return? He has Tex Free Air. That's a difficulty. He also is about to get a fourth Tech 3 mechs, and that's why he's he just doesn't have the units because Blast has one Tech 3 mechs in, in return. What's up, Mosey? Yeah, uh, Blast surely has, has way more units here. 38 bricks versus 12. How does... I mean, the most shocking thing is that there's still 33 rhinos. I mean, their number is rapidly dropping because Tex is losing them. But, like, Blast, Blast, you have so many more bricks than him. He has twice the number of bricks and he retreats, allows bricks to die in bad trades, and then walks in, takes all of the... If he had walked all of them in at once, like, it doesn't even matter that he takes damage from the rhinos, but this is so unnecessary. It actually is just insanely unnecessary. That's a nice brick to have. I mean, come on. He's got so much more stuff, but he's not using any of it. In the, it at this point, right, it's it's a huge mistake that they don't have Omni. Because with Omni, suddenly you can see you can see what's there. It's it's so powerful for Intel. And if Blast had, had an Omni He'd, he'd, he'd scout once, see how many bricks there are, be like, oh wait, I have twice as many bricks. And then just, yep, there we go, let me just walk over that. But no, he's, he, he just, he's, if you don't use your extra units when you have them, then, oh my god, this is, this is cheesy as fuck. <laughs> oh my god, look at that. And Tex tries to repair it instead of reclaim it, but somehow doesn't. It doesn't kill his units. Oh, it actually, yeah, it, it the shield blocks the damage. So much reclaim here next to Blast Base, even though he's just not used his units well. I mean, Tex is being so brave. What does he? What? How does he think he can walk these bricks in? I mean, there's no way he should have been allowed to hang around next to Blast Base for this long, but then he, he goes even closer to the base and just donates another, you know, casual AK mass or something. I don't know. Very strange. And this fight up here where Blast, again, just had more units, still has more bricks. He's, well, it looks like he took a strat to the face there and lost a lot of bricks to that. Took a lot of damage. All these bricks are very unhealthy. <laughs> what are these torpedo bombers doing? And how do they have so many kills? Interesting. This brick just got picked up. Again, Blast just needs to give a move order forward. There's a lot of bricks here now, actually. But still, he should have more. Certainly, this factory can't be allowed to live. All of these mexes have died somehow. I don't know how. And we have some trebs also providing... Quite nice damage, actually, on these guys. Oh, the strats. No mobile anti-air. Also, no coverage for the strats. So they are killed by inties after one pass. So, huge waste on the strats. They do get some bombs off, and this army is severely weakened, but still not not really worth it. One pass is not going to cut it for a strat. Even on so many bricks. Well, it might be close to, you know... It might be close to worth it, but you could get so much more value is the thing. Very nice kills. Oh, he didn't get the other kill. Trebs. 
Trebs are, do Trebs are doing some work. On the top side though, things looking a bit scary. Not sure why Blast is retreating up the mountain. That seems like the wrong place to retreat to. No intel. I would like you gotta have an Omni at this point. There's no reason not to have an Omni sensor. He has started upgrading it. He's realized, wait, I could have an Omni. I mean, look at the radar coverage. Basically covers the entire map. So Omni, of course, much shorter range, but the radar, you can see, it comes out to here. No reason for it not to, not to have that. Fifty minutes. Looks like some really good trades happen for Tex at the top. But again, can he get the reclaim? I don't know. Strats doesn't get, doesn't get another drop. Let's see the decal. What's up, McNeil? How's it going? Let's see the air force. Tex has to have far more air. He's got thirty four ASF actually. He does have an Omni, by the way, and only 12 yeah, for Blast, so obviously, I mean, Blast has been making air for a lot less time, in terms of Tech 3 air, I should say. That's just, gunship goes down, but now, can Tex just dominate air? Looks like he, he should be able to, there's no anti-air underneath as well. Sorry, there's two flags. But, uh, Tex decides to back away there. I mean, all these out-of-fuel inties are should not be sent in because yeah it's, just, <laughs> it's not gonna end well actually blast should not have sent in his units there either i guess but he's gonna kill everything flax will help and uh, that's again that's a lot of mass like all those inties are are just mass on the ground now for blast as well so not great there a lot of a lot of bricks donated on the top by tex and uh, it's the reclaim is once again in control of under under blast control. Now, does he have that omni? Ah, finally! Now all you need to do is get the air scouts out, and then you know where the bricks are. Now this should have been done twenty minutes ago, but um, yeah. Now he's like, oh yeah, I can just walk forward and kill everything. Could have done this, you know, a long time ago, but better late than never. And there's nothing Tex can do about this. These factories are extremely valuable. He should have paused construction in them a while ago, I guess. That's all he really could do. But uh, Blast, despite having all this reclaim, is still struggling for mass. How many Tech 3 mechs does he have? He has four. Seeing mm, essentially no TMD, by the way. Just pointing that out. And Tex has still only four, and also doesn't have storages around in various places. He got rid of the factories, but never actually placed the storages. Tex is going for Soul Ripper, minus 200 mass income, by the way. Oh! Air fight! Convincing win for Tex. And at the end, he stops micring, goes for the attack move, of course. Strats coming in after the. The bricks. How many bricks? Has he killed a load of bricks there already? Oh, he's hitting all of them. Just the cyber strats with so much uh, AOE. And the lack of Tech 3 mobile land here is a bit shocking for Blast. Blast is. He was thinking about making a spider, but decides against it, which is a good decision. If you don't have. If you're that behind an air control, it's very difficult to make. Uh, a spider bot do something very useful somehow these bricks just ran around and are now gonna kill all of these t2 mexes oh oh my god that's a really good move from tex but a bit disappointing for for blast no doubt a lot of trebs these are again extremely vulnerable to air actually so i wouldn't i would expect those to die there's actually could be strats on the way. Look at the army of bricks though in the middle. Insane numbers of dead bricks here. 14k mass. Holy shit. Texas actually dropped in bricks to just clean all this up and he has engineers. He's gonna build a factory and try and steal this reclaim. This is an ex extremely good move. Except for the fact that he's walking into Tech 1 PDs and a shield. Oh no. This was such a good move and then <laughs> it was ruined. 
No, it's X. Oh, that's sad. That's a... That was like a... Was that fully upgraded? That was at least ED4. But that was an exceptional move. Turned into a terrible move. So... <laughs> that's pretty depressing for Tex. Pretty, pretty nice formation there around the mountain. Great move order. <laughs> and here's the... Oh, no way. So the, the Soul Ripper goes straight for the mobile anti-air. Kills it, almost all of it instantly with with the, with the AoE. And then takes huge damage from the, the ASFs. Oh my god, he lost so much HP there. That this thing is going to be very easy to snipe. But now look at the damage he can do to the Brick Army with the AoE. Jesus, split them up, man. No, he's going into the worst choke possible. Tex now, again, chasing down the, the anti-air. Oh my god, please, split them up. Do something. Tex Dominant is, has actually lost air because there's just so much, so many bouncers. Blast knew that the Soul Ripper is coming. There's no other explanation for how many bouncers he made. And that Soul Ripper is doomed. The only positive thing from that is that he didn't lose the Soul Ripper on Blast's side of the map. But, holy shit. 14 bouncers still left. Okay, so we've got 22k mass there. Look at all the dead bricks. <laughs> Jesus Christ, there's 60k mass in the middle now. And uh, this gigantic army is walking around. He has to deal with this. I don't understand why he's walking away. If we look at what Blast has, well, he, there's no Sams actually, so is there? I don't see... Oh no, there, is, there are actually some Sams, so he has to fall away from that. But uh, he's got 42 bricks. In this army we have 37, so that's as many as every single brick on the map for Blast. And it's threatening, it's already crushing this expansion, it's threatening to come down here. And of course directly into the base, directly into the P-Gens. Building a Monkey Lord seems pretty ambitious at this stage. So many Air Scouts. But Strat's actually coming in. The fact that the formation is so split up for... For Tex is actually an advantage for him. So there aren't amazing targets. I mean, that those bricks are amazing targets and those are actually the ones getting hit, so never mind. But there's so many. All the flex can do a lot of damage as well to the ASF if they just park overhead. That's that's a sure way to lose your, your air force, but bricks have returned home and there's bricks going to come out of the water and try and do a lot of damage. I think he, he's definitely going to be able to kill some pigeons here, but how much mass is he going to donate in the meantime? Actually, can... Well, if he keeps attacking the power, then of course he's going to lose the bricks. Oh my god. Virtually every pigeon is... Or maybe every, every exactly every pigeon is going to die here. To, to Texas attack. Blast is at 740 power. He has this Tech 2 pigeon. I think that's the only Tech 2 pigeon he has. In the middle, he's trying to just basically stay on the reclaim in the middle so he doesn't give up 60k but he's he's not getting any of the soul ripper by the looks of it texas grabbing that and texas is building a spider bot and what in the name of god is this map is this match so a small 70k mass here unfortunately a lot of it is well that's actually in a dead smd he had SMD. Okay. There isn't a nuke. It's not going to be anywhere else but in the main base, of course. But uh, yeah, there isn't a nuke. And now Tex... That, that attack, although it donated so much mass, was so powerful. I mean, he only now has replaced one P-Gen. He could have used this spider bot, honestly, as an energy reserve. Had reclaimed it for energy. Problem is a lack of build power. He's not building any engines by the looks of it. He should, if he had like 
if he had 20 T3 NGs in the base, this would have been way smoother of a recovery. This is actually a very painful recovery that he's going through here. And he is absolutely going to lose air. I'm sure he already has lost air. I mean, yeah, he's only got 5 ASF left versus 24. And so the strats will flow across the map. We've got a spider bot done for Tex. And we've got 26 bricks on the field and air control. 49 bricks is a lot. But, um... Oh, that's nice, actually. You got P Gen up in this position. Still struggling for power, of course. Struggling for power because that's all he needs. He needs power. He has, you know, enough mass to run his base for 20 minutes with the with the reclaim next to it, but um, he doesn't have power to use it. He does, he finish a spider, but he feels that it was absolutely essential that he actually finished that. And so he goes for it. This is an insane commitment from Tex. And as you can see, Blast is doing more focus firing. I mean, he's not really focus firing anymore, actually. But taking this fight is great. If it's a draw, he gets the reclaim. That's that's it. And he knows that he's basically not he's not getting crushed here. He's taking a half decent trade, and that's all you need to make this fight worth. The Tex just I don't know. I don't understand that commitment at all. I don't understand any commitment that is a draw with 50 bricks next to your opponent's base. Just, you know. That's just me, I suppose. Tex wants to gate out. Blast would love it if he would do that. Uh, would have been interesting if Tex had immediately gone for a nuke. after he had killed so much of of the base i think that would have been a, a really good move if he had just instantly gone for a nuke he just killed smd he killed all the power there's no hope for an smd to be built basically in that scenario in time so i think actually a quick nuke would have been fantastic and actually just won the game he's gone for another soul ripper though we saw how the last one went however this scenario it looks a lot better for him there's a spider bot here coming out of the out of the water. It's not gonna even escape. It just gets absolutely annihilated. And uh, at least it doesn't. Well, hang on. It left all its mass because its gun was still out of the water. Need hives? Yes, indeed. Um, they both need hives. Hives would have made the recovery as well, just way better. Um. That, that gave full mass. Although in the water you usually get half the reclaim. Its gun was still out of the water. So it counts as dying on land essentially. And there's the scout spotting the, another soul ripper. That's going to be pretty scary. Because he does not have, you know, as many bouncers. He does have a lot. He has, well, a lot. He has 10 bouncers. Nowhere near the mass invested in a soul ripper of course. But... He still has 27 ASF, which is, is quite a decent number. It's certainly enough for uh, to do a lot of damage or possibly even snipe a, a um, Soul Ripper. Shielded Sam's here are going to be critical. And Blast really still is struggling for power. He's they, he is, he just not building enough power. It's 10 times better to be overflowing power at this stage of the game than it is to be stalling. Like, it's immeasurably better to be overflowing power. Because in this stage of the game, what happens is you have to be able to use large amounts of reclaim that come your way. Like, look, you still can't use this. He still can't use this. You want to be overflowing. It's so much better. If you could you could be even on power or you could overflow 10k, just overbuild power. Always overbuild power at this stage of the game. I mean, I'm not saying you always you should always be overflowing 10k power, but you get what I'm saying. Don't don't try to be stingy on your power income. Don't do it. 
T2 Naval Factory, I love it. <laughs> Blast, you fucking psycho. He's building cruisers. <laughs> well, he's built one cruiser, and that's all, sadly. Should have built more. At this point, it's actually fully, f fully understandable to make some navy, I guess, on these sides. Like, you have, there's so much mass available. I don't really see a problem with having some navy on the side here. At a nuke with just a million NGs and no shield. Tex. Tex. Number of storages. Yeah, I mean, the Tex has a few storages. But I mean, if if your whole base gets attacked, you're probably not gonna. Your storage is probably not gonna survive anyway. Actually, yeah, you can see storage is here for blast. Actually, so they they are building some. <laughs> Certainly, big attack on the top side. A mega. There's no. Where's the mega from? From uh, from Tex, he has no mega. He seems to just be lacking in the land unit department. I mean, at this point, blast has sucked up so much mass. He's basically gotten back into the game. The only problem is there's a nuke. About to complete. Sams are better than cruisers. That's true. The only thing new uh, cruisers can do is like move. I guess that's an advantage. But he's in a tiny pond, so it's better to just make. Oh no! It's it's better to make Sams. Oh no! It's so close. <laughs> no, and he loses. He lo he's losing his air at the exact same time. He's lost all of his air, and he has three bouncers in this army. And he's just he has to run towards the base now. This army is so far away, though. He's gonna try and maybe kill some. It's, oh no! Sam, oh, nukes. Failed to kill the nuke. Strats, strats failed to kill the nuke. Cause it, cause it had vet, cause it had already killed stuff. Ah, uh, and now, the mega is dead. The mega is just dead already, which is incredible. Strats and bricks just doing the work. All of these bricks will do nothing. The nuke lives. It, guys, if you don't build a nuke, a um. If you don't build a shield for your nuke, then I don't know what to say to you. I don't know what to say, except that's just insanely bad play. Uh, hives being built. There is still some power here, but again, he's lost. His whole base, and now there's bricks in his base. He lost. He actually still has the land HQ somehow, but yeah, it doesn't matter. Spider bot now. If you'd built shit, yeah, get out of here. <laughs> and yeah, there's there's no way to to destroy this base. Where is Tex? He's he's in the water. Now, what will be the most amazing end to this game would be. Um, Brick torps killing the ACU in the water. That would be the the amazing finish that we all deserve, but but no, that's not what will happen. Simply, all of this stuff will die. There go the trebs. Bouncers going down, and uh, blast doesn't really have anything anymore. He's building hunters now, which is uh, an interesting choice. But uh, what he has is... Oh, he's actually building a mega up here. <laughs> However, that mega will never reach anything worth killing, I guess. Yeah, the mega died a while ago. It just died here to strats and, and just bricks, I guess. Maybe it had already taken damage from air because it died seemed to die very quickly. Um, also, there, yeah, there's no intel for uh, for blast when he sent this army in and he, he just got wiped. And yeah, there's there's no hope anymore. Took about two minutes of solar. Okay. Oh yeah, of course the solar. I actually forgot about the solar. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's what, that's what did the, 
the a lot of the damage because I was thinking it just died way too fast but yeah the soul ripper shooting at it makes a lot of sense and there's an, the second missile launch from that nuke killing everything of value that the blast has he really does oh actually he has multiple pigeons here but uh yeah that's that's it cruiser <laughs> the one cruiser he made gets killed by gunships and tries to kill the nuke again 158k mass killed <laughs> It's like, yeah, not only Nuke got up faster because he didn't make shield, Nuke also tanked strats. Yeah, but the Nuke tanked strats because it got vet because it was attacked after it launched. So if it was actually attacked at the right time, which would be, you know, before your SMD loads and before it launches, then it would have died. And then you would have no Nuke. So I'm not being baited into thinking build, not building the shields was actually a good thing. Never. It's like I made a bad decision which capitalized on the bad decision of my opponent. So haha, I predicted that he would fuck up and therefore no. No, 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 no. Never. He's escaping with T3 NGs. I'm not sure what he's going to build. A naval factory. Where is Blast? Oh, here he is. <laughs> he's got Torp. He's got Torp on his commander. God damn. He's in range of the Omni Sensor, so stealth does not help him. Blast will do everything he can to end every game with a with a calm drop. That's one thing we can be sure of. Blast with four hundred and twenty something k, four twenty two. Four hundred and twenty two thousand, reclaim, and Tex with just under three hundred thousand reclaim. Oof, Tex barely ends with more mass after you know many many minutes of blasts having no base so quite a ridiculous game just just insane the nuke won it in the end 158,000 mass killed the Estefan ignore best of seven so I can't I can't do that And uh, yeah, that's that's an incredible game there. Not sure what else to say about it really. Let's see. I think we can probably. Finish group A today. Let me see. It depends on Paralon's games. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's 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 finish group A today. Okay. Alright, see you text. A few more games to be shown. That one was freaking crazy.
It's kind of game where there's just it's just a mess. You you can't really think straight anymore at a certain point. And uh, it comes down to some craziness. The SMD was, oh, it was so close to being loaded. Absolutely so close. Gonna need a snack. What's up, Egan? It's going well. It's going well. <coughs> So Tex once again, just just a lot of UEF. He had Cyber in the previous game, but understandably. But uh, other than that, it's been all the UEF, I think. Blast also has UEF. So let's see what happens. Both going for quick labs, actually. Just, uh, okay, only one lab from Tex. First lab, though. Second, third lab for... Fourth lab for Blast. Look at this. Yes. Yes. Three labs together is... A bit of a death ball in the early game. You gotta keep them close, though. Gotta keep them... Close together so they can all fight together. Of course, units with short range like labs are significantly weaker with, uh, you know, bad micro. They need to stick close so they can actually do some damage. Speaking of damage, Scruffy here from Tex is finding a kill. No defender for this engineer, nor this one. So pretty... Aggressive move from from Blast to make three labs and send them all to the side. And this lab, with no scout, has not managed to find this engineer. Engineer in the middle here. Well, look at this. Nice pick off on the scout. All three labs still alive. Engineer. Two engineers go down. This engineer here and another engineer that was building this mechs, I guess, died. But I don't see the wreckage, actually. The lab manages to kill the tank and now just runs away. The tank has an order, an attack order, so it won't be able to catch up if the lab keeps running around. Which means the lab could actually potentially get another kill, but we'll see. And in the back, these labs also surviving. Look at this. This is some nice, nice orders here. These labs surviving for a long time, but uh, Tex robbing the reclaim in the middle. Bomber coming in and he's going to take out this engineer. Again, Tex has very nice bomber micro. I mean, he used to always go first bomber back in the day. So you tend to uh, develop this this skill. When you do that, Tex needs to get these engineers building again though. As his ACU leaves shortly after Blast does. Blast's only with four factories at the minute, whereas Tex has five, so that's pretty significant for for Tex actually to have one extra factory at this moment in time. And it's probably because he got he's getting so much reclaim. This is this is a, a bit much to allow here. This engineer just randomly reclaiming trees when there's there's all this reclaim around is not great from Blast. And uh, Blast is winning. Air it seems well he's killing Inti's nice dodge with the with the engineer here. Absolutely needs to keep dodging because Tex is on him with the micro. He actually doesn't succeed there again. He comes back for more. And wow, he actually managed to dodge that as well. That was one of those like fast drops from the the bomber that can happen sometimes when you micro a lot and drop sort of directly if you're directly over the engineer, sometimes the bombs will just go straight down really fast it's very rare that those miss so nice work from blast there or maybe he just got well he got a little bit fortunate as well i guess 
but still the engineer lives no matter what and uh, kill some inties as well all in all the bomber didn't do what it was meant to do and if we look at the back of this base here seems like the labs might have gotten some additional kills or at least delayed some things for a very long time uh, the back is just very underdeveloped Meanwhile, Blast has the back. He's got engineers there. He's just lacking one mechs here. That's all. He's getting reclaim as well. So, expansion looking a little bit better for Blast. <clears throat> so, Tech's in the middle. He doesn't look to be going Tech 2. His base has really not developed too much. Yeah, that's what I was expecting. <laughs> Seeing as he's maybe like three or four factories behind where I would expect him to be. Well, he's got like four factories of mass in the bank. So that's that works out. That checks out. Blast looking in a much more comfortable position. Uh, on the way to Tech 2 land. Spending his mass pretty well. He doesn't have a Tech 2 mechs. That's the only thing you could maybe ask him to have extra at this point. But... You know, nicely balanced economy. Good, good, um, actually quite nice timing on the energy storage even, because he, he was basically even on, ma on power before that. And now he's going to fill up that storage. That's going to be helpful. He's also dropping the side. Maybe both players a little bit slow on the side expansion, to be honest. But Blast gets there first. Sh should probably have brought maybe a few tanks with him, but... He got there first. Tex is covering the other side, but has no intel on the... They're both covering uh, the islands, actually. This is one of the few scenarios where you might actually patrol Inties, and it would work out for you. Bit of a mass donation from last year. Very difficult to attack on Twin Rivers, of course, and uh, this is the downside of attempting it and failing as Tex heads to the top side with two tanks and two NGs. Blast scouts the island just to see if there's anything there. He sees that there isn't. He's also now at Tech 2. And Blast needs to be a little bit careful here. Now, he knows that there's not a huge army. And he has most of his units next to him. So, again, just a little bit of caution. But he's not actually in uh, critical danger here. And this could be a nice drop. He could drop maybe... Oh, he's going to drop here. I was thinking, I think dropping all of them to the back is probably option number one. No, option number two would be, I guess, this one. Option number three is drop, like, two here and three here. But uh, one thing you could do is simply come back to the island, pick up whatever's here, and then go again. For example, the initial drop, probably better to drop here and attack the back. And then the next drop, if the transport lives very easy to land a drop killing these two mexes so blast giving up a little bit of ground uh thing is though i mean yeah both of them basically creating a reclaim field to then fight over and uh who's really going to get this well if blast keeps retreating it's it's not going to be him and these units that were dropped are actually getting further than i expected I like crunchy or creamy peanut butter. I don't really like peanut butter that much. It's huge in America. It's not really popular over here. So Tech's getting going for the mechs first and then a factory. It's a little bit greedy but works out. It looks like there's a, a drop planned. Although maybe the units he initially was going to pick up have already left. Have they? Yes, that's what happened. <laughs> so now he'll pick up some new ones. He's got Tech 2 P Gen. Multiple support factories. Looking good. Nut butter. Uh, my favorite butter is butter. Nut butter. Not sure here. Also, hello, Albert. 
So yeah, Tech's making some ground up here on the on the sides, but well, let's see. He's got uh, Sparky on the front line. He's built a PD, and now he's making the gun. Blast just going straight for the gun, and then looks like Nano for him. Nutella. Oh yeah, Nutella. Yeah, yeah. I don't really eat Nutella either. <laughs> Two tanks in the in the back expansion is not that scary, but there is only one tank defending, so you know. Who knows? Maybe. Looks like we will see a drop. Two pillars, and Lobo and a scout. But now he's actually going to counter the two tanks at the back here, with the drop now. Nutella is uh, hazelnut chocolate spread. That's what it is. So it's not really, it's, well, you know. Definitely, it's not really, it's not butter. That's for sure. I don't know if peanut butter is butter either, though. Okay, more bots. Oh, Blast getting pushed. Tex just, just attacking all in. Very aggressive. Kelly Gold. You mean Kerry Gold? <laughs> Close. Tex doing a lot of damage, but committing a lot of units. Where are the overcharges from? From Blast Shield. Blast Shield looks like he's going down. Can he actually escape from this? He has got nano, so if he gets away, he's actually... Oh, oh my god, that overcharge from Tex was absolutely brutal. Can he get another one? Oh. Oh. Oh my god, Blast survives. He's so close to a veterancy, but he doesn't have it. He does still have very nice regen thanks to the nano, but... Um, what? Where did this army come from? Why is it here? And why is there an HQ there? Why, why is the HQ there? Oh my Jesus, he could probably TML that from the main base. But again, nobody builds TML, so... Whatever. What's up, Louise? And, yeah, this army is in such a bad position, honestly. Tex, though, gotta be careful. He's really gotta be careful, but he has a lot of... Oh, he's, he blasts trying to block him with wall segments. That's brilliant. With an NG, that's amazing. Tex taking huge amounts of damage, not dodging Lobo shots, I think, and oh my god, it's dropping so much lower. He's gonna have to, well, actually, he's about to get a vet. There we go, 8k health now, once again. Blast Shield is gonna pass him out in health, though, very soon. Actually, he already has. Tech 2 PD goes down. Yeah, I'm from Ireland. Uh, yeah, and Blast now has more HP again. And he still has the nano upgrade. This this army somehow still lives. Should have been a mass donation a while ago, but ten k mass in units for blast. Six k for Tex. And now it's mass donation as he walks into the base. He's gonna kill some tech on pigeons, but actually there is no tech two pigeon for. Tex, what the hell? Have I ever left Ireland? Only on holidays. Yeah, blast with just the superior army here. Tex is going for nano now. It's kind of obligatory. People eat cereals in cups, and then don't. People don't eat cereal in cups. What are you talking about? And also, I don't know where you. I mean, I don't know where you hear they don't drink the milk either. Meanwhile, Tex is getting completely overrun. He did manage to finish Nano, but that region is not going to give him much at all. And 
Last takes the win there. Should have gone for draw. Yes, I think so. Blast simply outplayed Tex here. Also, he's a nice drop on this, this island with the two pillars. Could have killed the other mechs, but still, not bad. Also, you want to follow that up with NG, an NG drop, but again. At least we should be back. took about I think it reconnected on the fourth attempt which is very unusual it was literally like absolutely failed to reconnect three times so I thought it was just totally dead actually but we're back lost all the viewers but um oh, they'll be back maybe opinion about Max Verstappen <laughs> Um, I don't really follow F1 too much, but I did see that, well, I saw what happened on the last lap. I didn't see what led up to it, I didn't see, I didn't see, um, why there's a safety car until the last lap or whatever, but it's pretty cool that he... That he won, and in and t I don't know to win on the last lap is just insane. What is that even? Max Verstappen is a uh, Formula One driver. We just won F one for the first time. Um. Uh. It's for Red Bull, I think, right? So finally, Lewis Hamilton didn't win. <laughs> yeah, I'd say it's huge over there. I mean, it's super popular, just in general, I guess. I think most people would have wanted him to win, just because, mainly because, you know, Hamilton is just so dominant that the underdog always gets a bit extra love for being an underdog. And of course, <laughs> if he's Dutch, then yeah, he's surely getting some home support. What are these labs for? Very strange, like you shouldn't be parking your lab here. If you make labs early, you gotta be running across the map like this is a waste of time here there's no possible way there could be a lab here already pretty much so yeah that's this is this is really wasteful these are the kind of things that just i don't know they're just poor decisions honestly i don't like mistakes like this because They're very simple to, um, it's very simple to not make them. And being so early in the game, they actually have way more impact than you might think. The earlier in the game, the more each small thing matters. <clears throat> So Tex going for, yeah, most people go for, you know, two air factories on this map. Blast doesn't have the Hydra yet. And then um, he only has three factories in his base. I mean, we got four factories, fifth factory Tex. Can he afford a fifth factory? No, he can't. Yeah, I was thinking like, yeah, it's like sometimes you can look at someone and be like, oh yeah, they have an extra factory. And then you're like, well, they stalled mass to build it. So... Do they really have an extra factory? How 
old am I? What do I do for work study? <laughs> I'm... 28. And, uh... Considering my options. I'll probably go back to call it, go, go to college. In the near future. I think I know what I'll do. At this point. But I'm not sure. So. Tex. Attacking the left side. Looks like he just went this fight over here. Just has more tanks. So this is nice. He secures the location right before he gets the drop away. You can see he sent basically his largest group of units to here and then drops there so that it's pretty much a sure thing that he gets the location. And um, yeah, he's just lacking resources at the moment. <laughs> so toasty Ev. Sounds like you must be desperate. <laughs> Right, so it looks like Tex, well, he's got more mass overall. Blast shield, maybe his opening wasn't quite up to scratch, but, uh, well, okay. This is interesting now. He hasn't dropped this expansion, so he's going to be behind on expansion. Oh, he almost dropped into that PD. <laughs> And then the transport gets shut down. That is that is pretty sad. When you think what he could have done, which is simply, you know, dropped engineers here and had this expansion, that's pretty sad. Oh, PD getting some free kills here. Once Carrion comes back, it's an actual living. <laughs> yeah. I need three classes to finish associate degree and don't know if I'll ever take them. Yeah, hey, might as well, I guess, right? So who's got air control? So air control is absolutely critical here. We got 24 empties with fuel. So it looks like Blast actually has better air force. Will he win an air fight though? Seems to have quite a few units available to him. And he has finally gotten to this location. He's building the mexes. Doesn't go for the PD because he has a lot of units in the area to secure it. Oh, blind fight here. That And Tex just crushes it. That's that's what Intel does for you. You can see he knew it was there. And that's a huge fight. Like, you can't really overestimate. Like, losing fights like this is absolutely brutal. Once again, instantly getting the reclaim. And aside from that, just gaining in units by taking a really good trade. Now, Blast moves forward. Needs to keep his units with the commander, actually. But he can't defend this, this location. There's no PD. Trying to get one up, that's not that's not going to finish. So quite a decent counterattack there. And what's going on on the other side? Well, not a whole lot. Tech's being very passive. I mean, this is a bit questionable with the commander. He has a PD. He has a base. 
and his his commander's not actually doing anything. So if you if you have if you leave the base, it's good to have PD behind you. If you're staying in the base, I mean, I don't know, does he really think he's so far ahead that he can just do nothing with DSU? Maybe he's right. I don't know. Maybe. He is making tech two P gen, he's got tech two air now. Tech two land and tech two P gen four blast. Going for a slightly different approach. The wangers are on the move. The ACU is being dragged out of position, which I think is going to be pretty, pretty negative for 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 Blast Chill to have his his ACU in that position. Medusa doing mad damage here for free, which is which is amazing. A bit of stun locking to get some extra kills. Yeah, this map is is very difficult to play I would say I think it's quite tricky you're it's really you just gotta you know focus on tech one focus on map control there's a lot of a lot of things to fight for here so that's those maps are, are just more um, more difficult to play because there's there's more places to to fight Looks like this position is going to fall, and this is a direct result of where the ACU is. And now an air fight. Oh, Blast is definitely losing air. I mean, that wasn't even close. Texas produced so many empties in the, in the meantime since we last checked a few minutes ago. And with this base dead, and you would you, you'd nearly have to say that with the ACU here, he may have actually lost the ACU as well. But um, there's no there's no returning fire here. He lost this base, and there's no comeback. There's no there's th this is this it? Because that's nothing. That's that's just some mass donated. In fact, he kills a hydrocarbon. Barely relevant at this point. Doesn't even kill a max, and now gunships will kill so much. And going for tech tech two land and losing air. In return, has it's been well. It's been terrible for him. Air just does its damage more more immediately, so but he may even lose the ACU. He actually has the gun upgrade as well. Flak coming over from support factory and uh, yeah you can just see this is the difference the main difference between tech 2 land and tech 2 air is that you make tech 2 land it can't just immediately kill so many different positions I mean the gunships helped here the gunships helped here the gunships put pressure on the top side as well so Tech 2 land is more of a, a long term investment and it's also more expensive on mass, so it's certainly more reliable in the long term. But there's a reason why air is usually the choice here. And now, Corsairs come in to snipe the P gen. What's up, Mark? I don't know if I said hello already, but hello. <coughs> and. Uh, Pigeon is it's, it's not even going to be rebuilt at this point. It's already it's really low HP, the the uh, the rebuilding project. So it's it's so hard to see a way back. Blast has lost two major expansions. His Pigeon has been sniped. He has no air control, and uh, he doesn't really have any advantage. I mean, Tex has enough units in Tech One to hold on, and he actually has Tech Two land now as well. So. Yeah, very quick reactions on the on the reclaim has to be said. That was quite nice to avoid the explosion. But uh, it's half the mass in units. Even if the air tech one, that's half the mass is half the mass. And there's no contest in there. I mean, he shouldn't even really be making entities anymore, techs, because uh, 
There's no hope for Blast to ever catch up. Does that have a P gen again now? But uh, Blast will play this out by the looks of it. But uh, it's likely that he will. What I'm predicting is these units run in, kill the flex, and then the gunships come in and, and kill the ACU. That's what I would expect to happen. So let's see if it does. Well, okay, he just decides to back away from this. Those techs. Look at all these gunships. 13 gunships. Now, he has to kill the flax before he can move in. Because there's just too many flax here. Seven flax. I mean, if he if he kills, you know, if he leaves one flak, he, that's fine. He can kill one flak easily. He could kill two, even. But uh, with good splitting. He can't kill seven, that's for sure. Not with gunships. <clears throat> Maybe he could, you know, build seven Corsairs and snipe them with split attack. His army getting overrun. Just another... Another nail in Blast's coffin. Samantha's run freely. Up the planes towards the main base. And now Blast getting overrun by those units. It's only tech one on this side, actually, no tech two. And Blast calls GG. Tech drops Blast well played. Where are the gunships? Here are the gunships. Finally. Air fight always decides the game here. Yeah, air is extremely powerful here. If you don't know why, it's essentially because of this lake. Air doesn't care about a lake. Just flies straight over it to your expansion and kills it. So, land, uh, most land doesn't have this possibility. So... Yeah, I think uh, Tex just went for the generally preferred strategy of, of Tech 2 Air rather than Tech 2 Land and uh, showed why it's, why it's so good. He did already have a bit of an advantage. I think he had a better opening as well. So well played Tex there for sure. Now let's see, what else do we have to cover in Group A? I think we have... Two more games. What was deliberate trash talk? I don't get it. All right, let's do this. Let's cover these last two games. Of Group A. Let's see if we can cover every single game in the group stage before next Saturday. Oh, okay, I get you. Excuse me.
Hm, mm, what's up, Gabe? Yes, it is. Honey flavored. Cashews and peanuts. I don't know what honey, honey flavored means. Kind of suspicious wording, but. You know. Is what it is. <clears throat> Yeah, so Partlon went for first lab. Well, first Celine. Bit strange. But look. There's a target coming over the mountain. <laughs> Selene already about to pay for itself here. With one expansion tonight. <laughs> ah, the DPS is just so low. Oh, he's going to get the scout as well. That's a pet peeve of mine, is people losing scouts like that. Absolutely no need for it. Oh, another dead NG. Oh, oh no, he runs away. Hmm. Hmm. Could come back around, actually. Oh, he's being tracked. Oh, this is a cul-de-sac, actually. He can't get through here. Yeah, the peanut, when it's just peanuts, not a fan if it's like you know some cashews and peanuts then it's like yes i can i can i can eat a lot of that the cashews carry it <laughs> pew 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 indeed <clears throat> so a bit of damage there but actually i mean he kind of got away with this this ng definitely is in critical danger not sure how i feel about this pd Honestly, because the map is so open, you like this looks a bit closed, but really you can just run through here. So a bit unusual. I would be tempted to continue reclaiming. That's it. Bomber to just kill an NG. Right here, I hear another pew pew going on over here. That's a dead NG, I think. Plenty of kills from Parallel here. Where are the kills from Turbo? Or not Turbo, Blast. It's going to be another kill. Oh man. Blast taking all the damage in the early game here. And is he doing any in return? He kills this NG, is completely undefended. But you can see five tanks in this area. You have to do damage in that scenario. Again, we see Blast with a lot of tanks sort of just parked somewhere for a while like he parked here and meanwhile Parallon just making use of the open mid area again it looks a little bit closed but really there's, there's just gaps everywhere so Parallon running racing across the map and uh, doing damage while blast maybe is just a bit a bit slow to get the tanks across and again maybe if he does park them he might have parked them in the wrong place. Only two engineers building in the base. That feels like it's not going to be enough to spend resources. Well, for the moment, he's got a very attractive looking balance. Although, given that he is going to get some extra mexes here. Specifically these ones. Oh, both ACs on the same side. That's important. Um, he is going to need power, basically. So this factory here is a mistake in economic terms I would say unless he can actually manage to not stall I, I would be super impressed if he does not stall power it seems impossible to avoid it at this point what a crappy map I think this map is fine actually don't really I mean do you mean visually yeah now he's got the big stall in terms of just gameplay I don't really see an issue with it actually it's not fascinating 
Like an acne ridden teenager's face, yeah. True. Not wrong. Nice transport from, from Paralon. Into the top expansion and they bring some tanks. Why not? Why not? Oh, the tanks are for here, actually. Interesting. That's a nice raid, actually. Denies the mechs. They kind of pause at when they land. They, d they didn't seem to immediately... Like... Hmm, bit weird. Because sometimes, like, if you drop really close to something, the units can be shooting on their way down. As they are falling from the sky, they can shoot in the sky. Those thams seem to drop and only then begin to turn their turrets after a split second so that was a bit weird maybe the vision didn't update properly or something um or quickly enough <clears throat> so it looks like they have split map control basically evenly although blast is the one who's taken i'd say more damage certainly lost a lot of engineers early on to uh, slow him down Another example here, dead mechs. And yeah, whenever you see like a single tank in Celine here, and you see all these tanks here, you gotta think that this was not necessary. And now he's losing an NG. Oof. Pyrolon, go oh, I love it. That's actually such a great move from Pyrolon. Just immediately goes for the gun. Like, and actually Blast has done the same. He actually got there first, so maybe maybe this is simply in response to Blast's gun. But uh, either way, just going straight for the gun this position is really good. Fantastic decision making, honestly, because you're not really going to be able to fight over this and one of you win it. Now, Blast needs to keep his units close. He's, he's not micring his units properly, but still doing I mean his ACU is being marked correctly he just needs to keep his AC, his units a bit closer um the thing is that when it's two ACUs facing off it the upgrades are are the deciding factor really they they ought to be because you, you shouldn't really be completely outnumbered in units there's not many places to actually send units here because there's no expansions in the middle there's just the odd mechs here there's like two mechs in the middle so you're not sending units middle, unless you're trying to do some raiding, which is you can do. Most of the units, though, are going to go to the corners. Speaking of, please kill this PD. Oh my god, he lost almost all the Mantis there, so he can't kill the expansion anymore. And actually, all these attacks appear essentially failed. So it's all focused on the bottom side, where the ACUs are, and they're both dropping health. What is happening in this air fight? Nobody, nobody knows what's happening. Nobody seems to be aware that there really is an air fight going on, because the Inties seem to just be going idle constantly. That's an attack move, which a bit depressing. But uh, he wins the air fight. That was, that was bizarre. Also, Paralon getting some nice kills. Last has less HP. That's an overcharge. Bit of auto OC there. You hate to see it. See that? That's why I hate auto OC. Yeah, let's just spend 5k energy on one T1NG. Such a waste. Parallel doing some drops and things, trying to make some stuff happen. I don't hate it. We have jesters here for blast. And Parallel's coming in. And he's backing away. PD is down, Mexes are down, Factory is down, and the reinforcements are heading towards this direction. Last needs to make sure he doesn't leave any units behind here, he needs every unit forward, and the Jesters are coming in after the gun comb. There's no anti-air, he is throwing up an anti-air here very quickly, so that's gonna either kill the Jesters or force them away. How about both? Kills one, the other one forced away. It actually flies way up into the sky because there's that really pointy mountain there, by the way. That's what that's why that happened. 
And Blastul's pushing. He's got a lot more uh, kills on him. He's got almost 2,000 mass kills. He's heading for his third vet. Paralon hasn't even got one yet, so he's it's doing well. But look at Paralon's army. This is a very significant army he's got. And uh, Blast really needs to take care that he doesn't get overrun here. He has the advantage, but uh, he also, to be honest, needs to press because he somehow 7k mass behind. I'm not sure where that difference came from, to be perfectly honest. Like, in terms of reclaim, well, that's certainly part of it. Paralon has significantly more reclaim, maybe 2k plus more reclaim. Uh, and uh, how many Selene's for Paralon? Well, that's actually a really good point because holy shit, he's way over 60 Selene's. That's so bad. That is such a waste of mass because they're he, oh, because <laughs> they're just so bad in combat. That's terrible. Jesus. Thank you for pointing that out. Blast Shield now is making the new and improved stealth upgrade, I believe. Basically, uh, now it's it's stealth. It also gives um, gives HP. Yikes! Indeed, can he get it finished? Harlan's just shift Gene towards him. Last shield finishes the stealth upgrade. Gets that HP. Gets stealth as well. And look at how many few units he has. <coughs> Excuse me. Look at all these units idle here. Look at all these units idle here. And Blast is getting overrun and he's shooting the commander. Oh, I don't know if he should be shooting the commander here. I mean, I guess if he's shooting the commander, he needs to... Well, he's only going for a draw at that point. But he has he's way too much HP to drop for Paralon. Although he's, he's down to 4k. Where are the overcharges? Without overcharges, there's no way. Oh, it's close. Paralon, that, that was closer than it looked because Paralon got a vet there at the end. But, um, oh, Blast, just, uh, units, units, uh, just out of position. I mean, look, he's like 30 units here. This whole army was just parked here again. It's like bad rally point. There's no point in having a rally point there. You want your part rally point here or here. If you have it here, you better be moving these all the time. Are they scouts? Yeah, they're a combination of scouts and labs so yeah you don't want <laughs> you don't want loads of them in your army you basically want as few as possible in your army while still giving radar so yeah this is it's pretty bad to build that many because they're expensive and they really contribute very little but blast loses units in the wrong place and uh, but he was so far behind on mass, just I guess being a bit less efficient in general cost him. So we have one game left to cover in Group A. It's Blast and Paralon again. Another map gen. <clears throat> this time it's seven. Oh wait, what was the previous one actually? I didn't. Oh, it was ten by ten, right? This one is seven point five by seven point five. It's the ten by ten, but with a uh, little bit of space and uh, blacked out. So seven point five by seven point five map gen. Should be pretty interesting, so it's quite a small map. Again, uh, quite a lot of mass. And the terrain in the middle is significantly less uh, passable. There's still some some gaps. But uh, I don't think we're going to see much... Many units go through. Let's see what... I'm actually interested to see what path this mech marine takes. 
And if he gets stuck, this little guy. Oh, there's another one. Oh. <laughs> Camera controls hard. I think I need higher sensitivity. <clears throat> All right, hydro rush. One P Gen blast shield. This is renamed to Monkey. Cardio mech brains inspiring indeed. Why did he avoid? Okay, really weird build from Pyrolon there actually. So he built three mechs, a hydro, a pigeon, and then the fourth mech. So no, don't really understand the thought process there of delaying the fourth mechs. Just seems like he'll have less mass now. My God. I'm gonna need an adjudicator. <laughs> Cause this man <laughs> just pinpointed that exact <laughs> fucking uh, engineer. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, that's exactly where he has two of his engineers. But like, that, that was that was insane. Also, hello. Broke the tree group just to trigger, and uh, then kills the engineer. Oh, expecting him to rename to depression any second now because that was fucking brutal. Well, well, kids, don't forget to defend your engineers. That's all I'll say. And uh, I mean, he got absolutely instantly hard countered. So the guy went, oh, my God, blast. Yeah, he way overbuilt pigeons. Jesus. Yeah, there's no excuse for building this many pigeons. He went second air bomber. Didn't have any tanks to defend his engineers. Instantly countered by just full land and la and two labs early on. That's just it's just a counter build. Even if he hadn't built like, you know, he he could have built like three less pigeons, right? Which is 225 mass, by the way, and lots of power. Um, it's still a counter BO, even if Blast had actually executed it properly. And uh, at least this bomber got got some nice kills. Three kills needs to needs to kill this this engineer here. He does see where he is. Uh, we will see air from Paralon. He, he, like, he has, look at this, he has two pigeons and he's overflowing power. Blast has, like, six. And he's overflowing copious amounts of power. Holy shit. Uh, it's probably actually one of the most common problems is overbuilding power in the, in the opening. Followed by never building power after that, so you just have a massive stall. That's that's like if you cannot do that, and then also you know play the game vaguely competently after that, probably gonna be like eighteen hundred. <laughs> now Blast is very competent outside the game, so he's. I mean the 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 opening his builds are like bad and then he can play very well after that. So he reminds me of me actually. 1800 is only global. He's actually like you know 2k on on ladder. Like the games against Tex, he basically outplayed Tex most of the time. And Tex is like 2300 ladder. <laughs> so, I don't know. I don't know what's going on with Blast. The 
there's just a few things that he could improve and he'd be sick. Feels like. Look at this ACU positioning, by the way. Hmm, four mixes. I guess I'll just walk over to those. <laughs> Meanwhile, Parallon marches up the field and is literally walking directly into Blast main base. What's up, Hearts, sir? Hearts, you're not spamming enough ladder to become good. Need to get on that. Hmm, PD needed, and we can see it under construction there. How many kills can Parallon farm here? He can farm so many tank kills. That's going to be really nice for him. And it do like there's just not enough units on the field at this moment in the game to ever be able to kill an ACU. That's the main issue. At least not without your own ACU helping. There's the PD. He needs that PD right now. Looks like Parallon is winning air as well. He's got 11 kills, 540 mass killed. The PD is up. He's actually managed to come around the factory, so he's not shooting into the factory. But it is being repaired. He needs to kill the engine that's repairing. This engine needs to help as well. The PD is about to go down. Oh, there it goes. It's being rebuilt. Parallel lost quite a lot of HP there. Look at all the units in the base. Paralon is another guy with just weird habits that are so easy to fix. Namely, not making rally points. <laughs> Leaving him with units in his base at all times. But look at the, the ACU usage is just fantastic. He's got a vet, he's got 20 kills, 12 or mass killed. Playing like 5 games a week, that's enough to hold my level. Hey, you don't need to play any games a week to hold your level. What do you mean? Oh, Paralon is just killing so many units. These rally points have to... He has to stop sending units to the ACU. Like, this, uh, this is getting a bit ridiculous now. Also, Paralon now... Yeah, that's exactly what he needs to do. Suck up the reclaim. He, he should actually hang around and just take more of it with all these units here he's not in danger meanwhile blasts what has he achieved he killed he got this expansion cool it's now gone and uh, uh what what else really nothing but he is coming back to try and just kill paralon but guess what <laughs> there's a pond here the paralon can hide in now he doesn't want to get trapped there so yeah it looks like he's heading this way also, he's got a lot of units coming, so I don't think Blastio is going to be... I mean, what does he have? 25 tanks. He He's lost more units to the ACU than he has at the moment. That's how brutal this ACU movement was from Paralon. He just used his ACU extremely well. Paralon has to survive this exact fight. And then he will win the game. If he doesn't... Then it's going to be a, a full best of three. And here comes the cavalry for Paralon. More tanks arriving. And Blast is not shooting the, the tanks. He's just going for the ACU killer. Which means he's going to lose his own tanks. Oh, now he switches to tanks? What? No, this is the exact wrong moment to switch to shooting tanks. Please, no. Please shoot the ACU. No, <laughs> he should have been shooting tanks at the start if he wanted to shoot them. Well, okay, he's gonna he, he can survive this. Falls back. There's decent reclaim field here, and he still has map control on the other side, which is good. Paralon hasn't really built anything in his base in a while, but yeah, he kind of should have. His his macro has suffered <laughs> severely. Bomber goes down to the anti-airs. A little bit of a nice micro for Par for Blast still there, getting some extra kills. But as you can see, Parlin, almost at 40. Double what uh, Blast has killed. More, more than double. 
Bastille adding another factory. Can he afford it? Well, not power-wise, but in terms of mass, certainly he's also... Yeah, this recon feels very nice. Did he reject humanity? He has. Seems like he has. <clears throat> Uh oh. Oh man. <laughs> I get some I get some bad vibes when you see just the AC walking forward and the units all the way back here standing still. He, there's always a chance that the guy just doesn't doesn't realize in time. Nice raid here from Parallel. He has more tanks here. One mex goes down, another mex goes down. He should be able to kill actually all these mexes. Yeah. Bomber could could help out here. Well, he, maybe one mex will survive, but that's a really good raid. A really good raid, and Blast can't really walk forward here. He doesn't have, I mean, he has the health advantage. He doesn't have, oh. Well, actually, now he's in a really difficult position. The problem is, also Paralon with energy storage there is going to help him a lot because he does not have power to make this upgrade. He needs to, at this point, he should not build power, like even reclaim that P-Gen to finish the gun, honestly. You usually don't want to build P-Gens as you're making the gun. <clears throat> but um, yeah, Blast can't can't stop him from making the gun here. And he's walked so far forward that he's he's got, what, one NG next to him? that could potentially assist them. Parallon has the gun already. This is brutal for, for Blast. He shouldn't have walked forward here. Now he's caught in no man's land. And uh, he actually didn't have the units to just run in and force the cancel on the gun upgrade. He also didn't have time to make it himself because he had no assistance. And uh, now he's just against a gun comm. I think his only hope is just to turn around and run away. But again, he doesn't know that he doesn't know exactly the moment the gun upgrade starts for Paralon or anything. So you can't expect him to make that decision on the spot instantly. Now he's just in such a bad position. He's got 57 tanks, 23 Lobos for Paralon. 83 tanks, so he's got the superior forces. The Lobos shouldn't be too effective at this point, and he also has, you know, 14 of his own, so he's not, like, way behind on that either. But the gun, the gun is such a good move. Such a good move by Paralon. And the, the energy storage to prepare for it was also very nice. Also, you can see how, how much power he built in the last couple of minutes. Specifically to to get a gun upgrade, Tech Two Max. No, wow, he went for Tech Two Max and Tech Two Land. Meanwhile, his opponent has the gun. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta go with the gun every time. Fucking sp spam bots. Like they used to just be in the comments after the video, now they're actually on the in the live stream. God damn it. Nice PD up there. Tech to land. Sparky. He's gonna make a PD here. It's really expensive and look what he's giving up. He builds a PD as far back as possible. Goodbye to all of these mexes. ACU's gonna push the case here and uh he should start the upgrade immediately. Like right now, he needs to start the upgrade and get get these engineers to help. He only like one PD is a deterrent enough. I don't think he needs another one. He just needs to make the gun right now. Second, like I actually don't think he needs a second PD at all. Parallel's gonna hang around and try to maybe dodge a few shots like that, get some free kills, but like. It's it's pretty it's pretty dodgy. The thing is, like, if you're 
turning in tight circles, usually the AC doesn't shoot because the gun doesn't turn fast enough. And he's kind of kind of wasting HP. Unless he's close to a vet, I could understand if he's close to a vet. Otherwise, he should really just back away. Thing is, he can just walk away, back out of the PD range, send a lot of units in this direction. Meanwhile, he's getting some reclaim. Took away a lot of mexes and blast cancelled his upgrade. Oh, the Lobos were after him. The Lobos were targeting his commander to, to cancel the upgrade. Now there's three PDs in this one location. It's such a gigantic investment. That is a bit sad for Blast. Wow, he actually counter raids here with two tanks. <laughs> he just can't do damage on this side at all. He absolutely has to make the gun. He can't be walking away, walking forward here. If he makes the gun fast, like, stop making these PDs. No, 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 not there. No. Oh, blast. I feel a little bit bad. And my voice is suffering. But... God, why did he walk forward and then start upgrading? He should really reclaim all three of these PDs, by the way. Just saying. One Sparky over here to build a PD, like in this location, would be sick, by the way. That would also be good. Paralon is, you know, filling in the gaps here. He's catching up in various areas. Got his own tech to max. Got his own tech to land. And uh, he's just now taking control of the of the game here. Meanwhile, Blast is distracted into. Whoa, he's he's kind of trapped here. Look, he can't get past. I don't like. That's there's no gap there. Is that there's a gap there? I don't know. I don't think you want to try and pass through that. To be honest. He could be trapped in this in this bowl here. And it's insane that Blast does not have the gun yet. It's actually insane to me that he doesn't have, have the gun yet. Okay, he's control kid one of the PDs. He should do do that for the, the other two as well, to be honest. Now adding P gens. Tech two P gen would be superior choice, but he needs some tech one first, I guess. <coughs> Tech 2 Land Factory? I wouldn't make that there. I think it's completely unnecessary, honestly, to make a support factory forward on such a small map. Gun finally completes, but Paralon is making that move that I said he, he could have made a while ago. He, he does go for it now, where he just peels off to the right. Leaves all these PDs here doing nothing and uh, takes out most of the mexes of, of blast shield that are not just directly inside his base only problem is his pd but uh that won't be a problem for long and now the diff now it's like paralon has to have more units now almost 10k in units Last 6.7k. That's that's what happens when you spend, you know, the differences in in the PDs basically, and uh, losing some mexes here. And now he's got most of his army, honestly, like half of it, and all the good units on this side. Oh, he's got no intel. This is all Lobos. Very ambitious attack here. Any attack, like at these points in the game with where you have, where it's just units, it's not the commander, is like they're virtually always gonna fail. You absolutely have to have, you know, your ACU there. And Parlon has played really well here to take control of this. Now he has this expansion, which is Pretty ridiculous TML. Finally, someone discovers TML. 
He really needs to reclaim these PDs because he, he desperately needs the mass. <clears throat> nice overcharge there for Paralon. No TT units here anymore. Well, actually, no, there is one. But he took out a pillar with the overcharge. And Paralon with 5,500 mass killed, over 100 kills. Last with 34 kills. Counter attack on the left hand side. Blast? I mean, why why does he retreat so far? I don't understand. You can't just, you know, give up space. T2 air switch for Paralon. This is what happens when you have control of the game. You can make these kind of switches and uh, have time for them. You don't lose out. That being said, uh, there's no TMD. No TMD at all. Which means this P-Gen is probably the first target. Next target, probably the Tech 2 Mexes. He could, if he's a massive brain, ground fire here, killing the Tech 2 Engineer. Actually, the P-Gen just barely is in range with the explosion to kill the, the Engineer anyway. So that's... Uh, there is There are more Tech 2 Engineers here, but they haven't. he hasn't reacted yet. Now, why is there not another missile flying? Hmm. Yeah, now normally I would wait until there's more than one missile loaded. That way you give the person less time to react. Now, having said that, there's no reaction anyway, so... Works out this time. Or maybe maybe actually one of them hit the mountain or something, because that, that looks... This match is really high. There goes Tech 2 Max. Reaction now? He certainly knows he doesn't have pigeons anymore. Uh, hello? Knock knock. Para. Anyone there? Hello, sir. Hey, look, you can see the whole army over there. With this camera angle. Thanks to the camera mod. Uh, no, he actually builds a replacement Tech 2 NG to build TMD, despite the fact that he has NGs here. Okay, great. I mean, he did react, I guess, just in a very strange way. Ireland looks like he's getting a massive win over here. And look, he just has engineers already to, to reclaim a huge field of reclaim before the fight's even been won. Now, that's future planning. Maybe not stalling. Well, he, I mean, he was stalling for sure because his, his air is paused and he's at like zero. Oh. This water could just be the saving grace for Paralon here. Actually seems quite difficult to get the ACU kill in the end if you're, if you're next to the water, like... Blast needs to be careful here. That's a dangerous move order. That's a re... I don't like that move order. He could have pressed the issue there. He could have pressed a bit. I don't like these retreats. Like, the, he, he retreats from nothing to nothing. Like, the, now, he's, now his ACU is just alone. It's like, he could die here. Whoa, that overcharge just flew all around the around the houses there. Another TML launches. Not sure where it's aiming now. Where is that going? Oh, is he is he actually trying to TML the ACU under the water? Let's see where it lands. Oh, it hit! He's not deep enough in the water. <laughs> That's minus six K damage. Paralon starts to run. Oh, this TML, TML, TML might just uh, nice die. Might die here. If Paralon pushes in, but no, he, he retreats. Paralon with such control over the left hand side, though, got this reclaim field, which was four to five k mass, and uh, I think that's the first Janus I've heard. Despite the fact that T two air was made a long time ago. What would be really interesting would be 
tech three land, but I think you would need a, a large reclaimed field to fund that switch. Hmm. Blast just falling far behind now. Doesn't really have anything to his name here. In terms of advantages. He doesn't have, say, you know, nano or something that gives him an edge in the ACU fight. He doesn't have more units, he doesn't have more options in terms of tech to air. Paralon has that. He doesn't have more eco. He has less map control and uh Maybe there's there was a chance here where Paralon felt like he had to go into the water, where he could have you know pushed, killed a lot of units with his ACU. He needs to take a little bit of risk there, bring his units with him, try and farm some kills. But now Paralon's completely reinforced the right hand side, and uh, it looks like he's just going to run over Blast Shield here. I think Blast is is not going to survive this. Too many pillars supporting the commander. And the 6k HP is, is already back on Paralon's commander. They lost from the TML and Blast goes down. <clears throat> I have to save. That was quite an interesting game. Quite an interesting game. Paralon's ACU movements completely put him in control. I mean, what's crazy is that Paralon had such a good start with the two labs he had such good ACU movement like killing 20 30 tanks outside the base and still and also such a great move with the the gun upgrade that still blasts had actually actually had chances and was was doing decently well in the game so it's it's quite an interesting game there. And uh, yeah, well played from Parlon. He kind of found the, the moves that, that Blast didn't come up with the right answer for. And uh, and uh, takes the win. So that is every game of Group A casted. Including a one and a half hour game <laughs> between Blast and Tex. So thank you for watching and uh, I'm going to call it night. If you want to see my gameplay from this tournament, check out the stream yesterday. Uh, where I played against Turbo, Inspector Cot, and Esperanto. So next week is... Uh, is the quarterfinals on Saturday and the semis finals in third place of this tournament lots on uh, Sunday so be sure to check it out next weekend see you guys